order this morning. Two more. <laughs> <laughs> Call us to order this evening at 622. Um, it's our reorganization meeting, so congratulations to everyone who is again on the board. We actually don't have brand new faces, which is nice. Um, so the first order of business is I will take nominations for chair. Nominate for yes, sir. Second. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you, Chris. Are there any other nominations? Is there any discussion? For the sake of discussion, I think Flora has led us very well, and I'm extremely happy to nominate her and look forward to voting for her for chair. Okay, well, hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Thank you. Any opposed? Okay. Congratulations, Flora. Thank you. <laughs> I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, everybody. It's, uh, it's an honor, a uh, pleasure, and, <laughs> and I'm delighted to be able to do this for another year. And it is a lot of work, so I do know that, but uh, I love this district, and I, I think we have a fabulous board, and we have a good budget, so I'm excited for this new phase, and planning, and all the opportunities that we have ahead of us right now. So. Very excited, and thank you for the staff and the administrators that are here with us tonight. And for pulling not a snow day two days in a row, but it's <laughs> <laughs> pretty impressive. So, and Lisa, thank you for your support always. Uh, okay, so now we have to uh, I'll take nominations for vice chair. Nominate Carly Bradley. Any other nominations? Okay, all those in favor? Of any, discu any discussion? Any discussion? Nice sorry, sorry, sorry. I was going to jump in this time. Yeah. I think he's done a great job yeah. in his role, and the two have worked well together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving the time to board. Mm -hmm. yes. We appreciate it. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Thank you, Kai. Right. Now I will take nominations for Cluck. I nominate Jones. Do you want to do it? it? It doesn't take any time. Being clerk is not a thing. I'll have to go to say I second. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lindy and then Ursula, any discussion? Thank you, Thank Jonas, you. for taking notes <laughs> <laughs> and all of our Plus, <laughs> 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 you also do other things. Yeah. Okay, Marcus, we appreciate you. I know you love you, Jonas. Remember, is that? <laughs> 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 okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Got it. Any opposed? Thing. Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, so with that, moving on into our committees. Yeah, first, we would have the steering committee. So we already have a member from Worcester, a member from Callas, and a member for East Montpelier. So we would need a member from Berlin, a, and a member for Middlesex for the steering committee. So, so I would nominate Ursula for the member from Middlesex. And I think we could combine. I'll nominate Diane. Yeah, so Ursula and Diane. Second both. Second both by Jonas. Yeah. Um, so who nominated Ursula? I'm sorry. Chris, Chris and I did. Ursula. Nominated. I nominated Diane. Okay. And Jonas, second both. Okay, so we're trying to confuse you. <laughs> Thanks everyone for yeah. taking that hour on Wednesday. Because steering yeah. committee takes extra time too. I will agree with that and I think it helps us 
you know, keep the representation and also have more diversity of thought at the Ferrara agenda planning. So I appreciate that work. Very helpful to me. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Eric, any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing none, the motion carries. So moving on into the policy committee. So I would be looking for three members to appoint three members to the policy committee. Who are the three current members and do they want to continue serving? Do you want me to do it? Me, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm Jonathan and Natasha. I nominate Chris, Jonathan, and Natasha. Second. Chris, Jonathan, Natasha. Chris, Jonathan, Natasha. Natasha. Jonathan. And Joe. It's Chris, Jonathan, and Natasha. Okay, that's mm -hmm. okay. Who seconded it? Sorry. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you, for the committee for doing important work. Uh, now to the negotiation. Uh, we currently have four members of that committee. Yeah, and that's, yep. that's okay. We need a minimum. It says three because we okay. need, that's the minimum that right. we need, but we can have as many uh, as long as people are willing to, to, to serve. Uh, I nominate Joshua, Diane, and Chris. And yourself. Oh, and I nominate Jones. Oh. <laughs> 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 Don't just say it. Sorry, Sorry, Lisa. You got that? Did someone second it? Who seconded it? I'll second it. Okay, Mindy seconded it. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So let me say well, that in the you. negotiations, Jonas has been doing a masterful job of um, facilitating. Uh, and and it just, I think we've really done, he's done a nice job of creating a good rapport with both groups. It's really been a, a, a really wonderful experience, I think, this time mm -hmm. going around. I mean, we haven't went out at a contract yet, but. You know, maybe that you still have to go there, but I think it's been a good release, working relationships and Jonas uh, plays a significant part of that. Thank you, Chris. As does Norm with the food. Just as what? Well. As does Norm with the food, because it's always the surprise. Oh, Norm, yes, <laughs> yeah, really yeah, yeah. we provided yeah. the food for yeah. today, too. And, and well, Chris, I, I would follow up on that by saying that I'm leaning on Diane quite a bit this year, and I appreciate that. I, and I think the entire board appreciates yes. all of you yeah. guys yeah. doing this. It's a lot of work. So thank you. Thank you, Joshua, for jumping in for full into that work. But Joe, this for the friend to call out. Yes. <laughs> so, and I responded. And you responded. Yes. So thanks again, Joanne and Diane. Good. Good. So, those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Hearing now the motion carries. Okay, uh, the most exciting committee, Education Policy Committee, uh, which can I say that Ursula is willing to lead with the support of nice. Carrie. We talked about this, and so, uh, so you know we we need a few more members, and I know that we always have like half the board on this committee. So mm -hmm. just raise your hand if you're willing to be in this committee, and we'll nominate one. I nominate Hi. Ursula McHale, Diane, Natasha, Lindy, Hari, and Daniel. And more. <laughs> Good. Okay. You got that, Lynn? Um, so. Sorry. It's okay. Um, so I have the, um, the Jonas nominated Ursula, Michaela, Diane, Natasha, Lindy, Kari, and Daniel, and Flora. Yes. And, and are you designating Ursula as chair of the committee? No, the committee, the committee can the do it, but we just wanted to clarify that too. Yeah. The committee will organize. Is there a second? Yeah. Yeah, who's 
Okay. Can I second? I think I second. No. Yeah. Oh, so any discussion, say like thanking you, Kari. This is a lot of work, Kari and Jan, too, and Megan. And thank you, this is really, and Ursula, I thank you for volunteering. To do I this. a promise of mentorship, so I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the most exciting work as far as we're all concerned. So thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. The least exciting, but very exciting finance committee. <laughs> uh, so I'm wondering, Daniel and uh, Kari and uh, Eric, who's on the phone, are you guys still willing to serve in that committee? And I know you would be in and out. You, as if you would take your hiatus right now and then come back. <laughs> After budgeting. After budget. Yep. Yeah. So. And I will be there. Oh, okay, sorry, yes. You too. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Joshua, you want to nominate this committee? Uh, oh, you want to be on that? Oh, I'm not sure. You join? Okay. Yeah. So I'm looking for somebody else. Uh, Natasha, you want to nominate this committee? Sorry, sure. Sorry. So it was Joshua. Joshua, Ursula, and Danielle, and Kari. And Eric? Yeah. Eric. 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 What was the committee? It's finance. the finance committee, oh. which is the biggest that it's been so far. So, wow. <clears throat> so sorry, Natasha nominated Josh, Ursula, Daniel, Kari, Floor, and Eric. Yes. Yes. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion is <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, the appointed board representative to Central Vermont Carrier Center. As you guys know, we don't have a RAP anymore. We have an actual board member on that on that board. Yeah, I've been the board member on that board. I'm willing to continue, but if there's somebody else that is really that can commit the time, that is okay too. It's uh, they meet on Mondays, uh, six to eight. Uh, you will be the finance committee too, and. So, I nominate uh, Floor. <laughs> so we're nominating you as the district, uh, as a director rather than a representative. Yeah. So it says, yeah, school board member, director. Yeah, you're yes. right. The director is the right term. Yeah. So we have six directors. It's really uh, a really good thing. Because no, I'm like a big, big fan of this. Uh, I if you know, I'm. I'm Happy to serve one more year. I would love for somebody to potentially fill this role next year. So if you want to think about it or come to some meetings with me, that would be great. I, you know, I love both the Career Center and Jody. And, you know, it's a great organization. Stephen helps Megan as part of it too. It, it's, it's a really important part of our area for all our kids. So. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Yeah. Now we have, you, you guys have your agenda in front of you mm -hmm. too, so yeah. I don't think I have to go through what grant means, but we're looking to nominate our, our <laughs> The front officers for the district. So, for my, should I read them aloud or is somebody prepared to make this motion? I can read them aloud. Because right. we're doing it as a slate. As right? a slate. Yes. Yeah. I um, nominate the following as truant officers for the school district for Berlin, uh, Aaron Boynton, Callis, Cat Fair, Worcester, Gillian Fuqua, Middlesex, Caroline May, East Montpelier, Alicia Leiser. We need one for you, 32. I mean, statue. J.B. Hilberty. Thank yep. you. And for you, 32, J.B. Hilberty. 
I was gonna I'll, I'll let him know he was nominated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys for not being here? <laughs> okay. Phoebe Pavlov. A, a second? Okay. <laughs> um, you you guys decide who's gonna. Michaela or Jonas? Me. Not Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we get into all the phone. Okay, so we need to establish our meeting schedule. So hopefully everybody's okay with staying with the first and third Wednesday of the month. The first Wednesday being the, where we do either professional development for the board, community engagement, or strategic planning. Yeah, as we get more and more engaged in that process. Do we have to have a nomination, or do we just, unless somebody dissents, does it have to be a motion? I, I think we just have to agree, but it doesn't, it's meant to hurt to do a motion to keep it. I do have a question, though, yeah. about if we're splitting the first one between community <laughs> engagement and strategic planning. I don't think that's enough time for strategic planning. So yeah. if, I don't know. I, so that's what that reads as. So I don't know if that's what you mean it as. No, so I, I was just saying that the first Wednesday could be anything, basically. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a board meeting. So we could be just doing community engagement, which at this point we're probably going to do all of community engagement through the strategic planning, maybe? Yeah, and I, I would also add that I think that the when the strategic planning steering committee convenes to develop a plan, the forums associated with board meetings are one method of engaging with the community, but won't be the only ones. And so I don't think that I don't think there's an intention to limit it okay. to those. I think it's just conceptually does the structure of the first meeting mm -hmm. being more public facing presentation engagement and the second meeting being slightly <coughs> more business. Yeah. 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 Keeping that first Wednesday flexible, so if we do mm -hmm. need to use it for strategic planning or any discussion we can or go more in depth into that. So, could I have a motion? Or so that's I move that we use our current meeting schedule the first and third Wednesday of each month, the first being community forum or board development on strategic plan. Chris, Chris second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, and then this one we don't necessarily need a motion, but we could also do a motion that we agree that we're going to use Robert rules as we've been in the past. We're small boards, even though we are a pretty big board, so just we would keep operating in the things of the minimum and Robert rules. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. We don't need a motion, just to have to be clear we that. We use the small board rules, right? Or we use the combination because we are okay. a little bigger than a small, but yeah. But it's, yeah. And, <coughs> and then uh, we want to ad adopt our board norms, which are part of your packet. Uh, that we again we have back in 2022, but we that are on the top on page three, mm -hmm. uh, and we will look at them again at our retreat where we want to continue to operate under the norms that we established back in 2020. We need them again in 2022, but now. So I I will be looking for a to adopt them. Yeah. I moved to adopt the four norms that were adopted in 2021. Second. 2022. Just it. Uh, yeah, adopt our four norms. Yeah, so second, uh, moved by Ursula, second by Chris. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. Up 
they think about this ridiculous identify community practices, a communication practices. So that was just for information. You know, we don't need to, but I'm assuming you guys are okay with that. That's the way that we've been operating right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's schedule our annual board work session. Alias retreat. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? We have two proposals. Yep. Um, I also just I'm realizing well we can just get to this one. We we jumped to board orientation and operations. That might just be how the agenda was organized. Which I think is fine. That should be going. That should be yeah. If I, is the students okay with that, or did you guys yeah. add or yeah. I just I just felt like we needed to okay. like it really organize yes. instead of breaking it yes. up. And I should have asked you guys first, but so okay. So, so we were having a conversation about um, figuring out a way to structure our retreat so that we have the leadership team be part of it, particularly for kind of the reflection on the year, kind of state of the schools, um, and thinking more thinking more thoughtfully about how we want to engage with them as part of the as part of these meetings in for the rest of the um, coming year. So that could look like a full day retreat where they join us for a portion of it. Um, and then or it could look like two separate shorter retreats where they join the first one and the second one is really more focused on affirming board goals, um, getting down a grain size, board work plan, things like that. And I think we had talked possibly about um, we have a June board meeting slated in the schedule for June 21st, which we should make sure should that that works for it, folks because yeah. it's after school lets out. The thought would be that, that we could use that time, extend it a little bit, perhaps have dinner together, and have the leadership team join that one. And then the typically scheduled August one would be just the board. Um, the other possibility would be to look for a full day in August, and there is also time to do that. Um, with the leadership team. So, those were the so, thoughts. Yeah, that was that was the idea. So June twenty first, even if it's not June twenty first, use that last board mm -hmm. meeting to to partner with them, and and then have still have a board retreat where we could get more in depth into our goals. It's the seventh or the eighth of August. We've been typically doing that the second week. Of August, and, but we we also that that could change. I know that it doesn't work for everybody. I think it would be nice if we if this is just a thought. If we decided this year that whatever we always do it the second week in August, you know, or like we always because then we can all plan our families and stuff uh, around it. I mean, we now we need a retreat. It's nice to start the year. With uh, with a retreat, and it's nice for us to be able to have July off. Although we're not going to have totally July off because we might be doing some strategic planning, but don't get too excited. <laughs> it, but but it would be nice to continue. To, and I know not everybody was able to join yeah. the last board retreat, but so I have uh, can yes can discussion thing. <laughs> um, June, June 21st is the summer solstice, and we had a meeting on the winter solstice. <clears throat> so, um, but, you know, we, my family celebrates the summer solstice, so I probably wouldn't be able to make something on the 21st. Um, and the, um, similarly, the second week in August is a week that we pretty much are always away. Um, so, which is fine, but my proposal would be to do it closer to the beginning of school. Cool, but I know that gets hard for the administrators because I think you guys probably start sooner than the students. But yeah, you know, students start Wednesday. Could do that, like, Monday. if we were splitting it in two, and the first half that they were part of was tagged to the end of the school year, then that would matter less. Right. If it was closer to the. Do you think it would make what would be more beneficial, like meeting just after the school is? is completed and sort of like have that immediately fresh or like sort of reflect and like, I don't know, and think about plans for the upcoming after there's been like a break. I don't know. The other thing. It's funny. This conversation, the leadership team has this very conversation oh. as it relates to our retreat and how we, where, when we're in the right frame right. of mind. Right. Um, and we also, similarly, although it's the same group of people at both retreats, which is different, we tag our end of year one closer to the end of the year, use that for reflection, looking back, 
what did we accomplish, we set these goals, how did we do, then we let some time span, that's kind of the processing time, and then the one mm -hmm. that's closer to the school year, for us, is future planning. So this is kind of that's the same, idea. It's, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Um, and it, I mean, it, that structure seems to work, I think. Mm -hmm. For us, we can't have it too late into August, because right. mm -hmm. the ship has sailed for planning by then, but that's a little bit different sure. than the board. Yeah. So we could have that one later in August, and that's better for, for, and then we could look at, we could send that little poll, <laughs> everybody will respond to it, <laughs> in, uh, it's for, for June, I'm trying to just go into the calendar right now, it, and see, we, we were scheduled for that June 21st, mm -hmm. it, the only other, we could do the, we could, we could do it on June 7th, do that retreat with, I don't know if that's too early, because we wouldn't necessarily have to have a community engagement that. Right, yeah. So it's usually not our work. So we could do dinner and uh, towards the end of the meeting, and maybe our business meeting is short, and just have that one meeting in June, and we can get a little closer on the work plan and see we need an extra, or yes. Uh, well, I'm looking a little bit particularly if it were the 14th, that would be very difficult because that's two days before graduation. <laughs> um, is the 7th, I'm putting the, these folks here on the spot, is the 7th oh, true. feasible for leadership? <laughs> Stephen, as the only principal here, and <laughs> central office folks. June 7th feasible for the retreat. June 7th? Yeah, we're, well, that's where we're all <laughs> at. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't preview yeah, that much of it with them. We were talking about the 21st, actually. Yes, yeah, yeah, Which yeah. was feasible. Right. So, are, are we talking about just the evening part? Just, yes, yeah, just the part. evening part. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's just <laughs> like you don't have anything else to do. Not quite as bad as what do you mean? It's not yeah. a busy time. It's not a busy time. Yeah, there's nothing going on. Nothing going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is the, the tricky part with that week. Um, elementary principals, elementary, all of the buildings have whatever the various end of year celebrations are, and some of them are scheduled now and some of them are not. So I can't guarantee that they don't have in their heads that week earmarked for various yeah. things. That, that, right. that would be the challenge. I would say that's not likely to be a night for most of those events mm -hmm. as a okay. Wednesday night mm -hmm. with yeah. the following week available as well. but. We would need to get this on the calendar to Fast. make sure. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's helpful. Okay. Okay. And we, we don't need that motion or anything to this. We just wanted to bring it up so that people could put it on the radar and we can send a safer date, at least. For I have already saved in your, day, in your yeah. calendar. Oh, that's true. We have it. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's so, so we could just I think that's a better it. night for yeah. okay. the board meeting than the 21st. Personally. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Um, um, I would suggest that we keep the 21st on the books because we may need to approve CBAs. Okay. But it, it, instead of being a retreat, it yeah. would be a business meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I wanted to add that I liked the idea of like coming up with a time frame that we can all agree on, pick a week in August that we're going to do the retreat every year so we can all plan around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could talk about that at the retreat yeah. too, but it would be great. Well, I think if we wait until June, then it might be hard to plan something in August. I mm -hmm. I look that second week is the only week. I mean that I oh, have without any kind of work or school or anything. Um, so I'd like to not have it then. The second week yeah. of August. So okay. That would start so why don't we pencil in the second week of August and then we. We figure it out. Sorry, but that's we'll okay. figure it out. I'll be but in Acadia. I was saying. Was that week. Oh, you were saying. Yeah. I thought you were saying that was the only week. No, no. I was saying that's the only week that I have, like for family. Oh, with no oh, other. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I totally read you. I'm in the same boat when I look at my calendar. The next week. Even though things start, they're more spotty. Oh, oh okay. I'm and sorry. So I totally misunderstood what you were saying. I'm so sorry. So the week of the 14th is what you're saying. Yes, that would be better to me. 30th, yeah. And, and because it does not involve so, the leadership team, I, I'm, that's this far in advance, that's fine. I'm, I'm, 
So in, in theory, for August, we would have blocked the... Oh, wait, the second week is the seventh. Never mind, I'm away the week of the fourth. Sorry. I see now is the second week block. So Thirteen. Are you saying for like the second and the sixteenth would have already been booked as board meetings and so we could just use say the sixteenth as a long time? Because it's the start of the year. I don't know. And the fourth matters for us. The same. Yeah. Is there a yeah, way that we can just send around yeah, and yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can yeah. Do that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so then the next one we do want to have a motion for, and that would be where we post our agendas. So at each elementary school, at, in our website, and at, the, at each town clerk is what we've been doing. So I move that we post meeting agendas in each school on the on the district website uh, and in each uh, town office. Okay, thank you. A second. Second. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh. Yeah. <coughs> Any opposed? Hearing none. The aye. Have it. Motion carry. It, the posting our minutes. Also a motion because that's part of the open meeting law. So could I have uh, a motion? I'll make a motion that we post our minutes at the WCUUSD website. Second. Thank you. So Lindy and then Chris. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. We need to designate a newspaper of record. I move that we designate the Times Argus as our newspaper of record. Thank you, Ursula. A second? Second. Thank you, Natasha. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, so we need to uh, designate a voting member for the health insurance. You can read the whole thing for the. Uh, but we need to send this name by April 1st. In the past, we have designated Ursula. What is the one? <laughs> <laughs> so anybody that is going to go to the conference, uh, you know, I'm happy to do it, but I'm already on the BSBA, so I think it would be a great opportunity for somebody else. To <laughs> that's why I was yeah, so it happens this second day, but oh, okay. we might not need to ratify this year, but we still need to send it. Yeah. We still need to send a representative. Is anybody willing to nominate Ursula? Which I, just I will nominate here. Ursula. Second. <laughs> Our voting delegate for statewide health insurance. Thank you, Lindy. Uh, and you second it, Diane? Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The motion carries. <coughs> yeah, the, the rest, I have this here. I don't want to get into the weeds of this one. It's just the our code of ethics. If you are willing and want to sign it and give it uh, back to us, that's that's great. If you have any concerns, uh, that's that's okay too. And, uh, so I'm gonna pass it both ways and pick one to me and just give it to me at the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Any? Yeah. And in any, any discussion, I'm happy to have discussion if you guys want to say anything about it. But I'm sorry, it was probably funny. Yeah. Is there a reason why there's not a title on the page? Um, I don't know. It might have been a copy paste issue. It should be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. So maybe, maybe it's just. It's I must have it. I wonder if it was in the. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I got it cut up for the header. 
But it's, it's I mean, it it's says just everything just, that it did in the packet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're just adopting the code of ethics. Mm -hmm. You can read through the document. You can sign it. There's not a title on the last Yeah. Yeah. So I must have cut it off when I put the header. Sorry. But it's that. And then the, the last part is that uh, there's some board development information uh, linked to open meeting law. It's always good to have a refresher if you want to do that uh, and the toolkit from the essential work. And there's going to be uh, May 8th and May 15th, uh, the first year journey. If you guys were not able to do it last year, every first timers, it's always good as a refresher too if you want to do it after. That's all. Uh, and then we're working on our board manual that we hope to unveil to you guys at our retreat. Yeah. Uh, and th that was that was it. Mm -hmm. So then we can move into our four students that are here for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So any adjustments to the agenda? We're just gonna remove that personnel. Oh, that's true. <laughs> we don't. That's true. We don't have any personnel, so we're gonna remove that. I looked where right. take, I know. You're <laughs> going to take your action. I am there. I want to be ready. Okay. And then I don't see any members of the public. Thank you again, staff, for being here. Well Thank you, Mark, area. for running our. Oh, we do have. So, welcome, members of the public. Uh, any public comments? Can you guys hear me? They must, because Eric was. Can hear you, no comments. <laughs> okay. Thank you, David. That's great. Great. No. Okay. Thank you, David, of course, also for being here and all of the members of the public. So um, I just want to point out that the um, Middlesex community had the pie breakfast again for the first time in like three years on Saturday, and it was a stunning uh, turnout uh, and really enjoyable to see. You know, I hadn't seen young kids in a really long time, uh, and it was really wonderful to see the community come out and engage and, and you know, it, it involves a lot of hard work, Honey Bean Barry, I think, was the spearhead this year. Uh, and, um, you know, but volunteers come in, they make the pies, uh, and then serve and clean up, and it was just a really delightful event, and I'm glad that it's kind of opening up. It's a, it's a rejuvenation, in a way, in springtime. So I just want to offer those comments. Nice. And, and I think a lot of our towns had uh, the lunch, not town meeting, but the lunch, and that was really well attended too. Mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Okay. So since we don't have any public comments, finally to the stars <laughs> of our why we're here, <laughs> the floor is yours. All right. Well, I just want to say first, I went to the pie breakfast. Tony reached out to me, and I helped serve. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was super nice to see everyone. I haven't been back to my elementary school in many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, I miss the pie breakfast. I'm real sad. I, I love the pie breakfast. Uh, okay, so our boys hockey won. We it was an insane game. Like I've never been some a more exciting high school game. We were losing for the entire game. We were tied at one point, and then then at the last two seconds, Ty Ross Mas Ty Ross Masler scored the tying goal. Tie tied, and then the second overtime we scored again, and everyone was there, and four, and Meg was there, so it's really exciting. It was good. The team deserved it. They're really, really good. Um, so it was a really good time, and everyone seemed really happy with it. And everyone got home safe, which was good because it was really late at two a.m. At two a.m. Oh oh everyone was really tired the next morning, but it was good. It was a good night. So. Yeah, it definitely raised the school's spirit. You can kind of see like an increase the next day. Um, also for sports, we had indoor track again this year. Boys got fourth in the state and girls got third, I'm pretty sure, in division two. Um, yeah. So to finish up our winter sports, we always have a sports banquet, and so we had that Monday night. Um, it was really nice, the coaches, went up and they gave speeches for their teams and Caitlin Fielder and Sarge Burns, Burns got um, the Principal's Awards and they're really good athletes, so it makes sense. So it was good. Um, also, it's the time of the year where college acceptances are coming in. Um, 
So a lot of people are hearing back, and it's really cool to see where people are going, actually. And then finally, this weekend we are doing Spring Fling. So it is our school, Harwood, in Montpelier, and everyone's going to, I think, a place in Montpelier. I don't think it's the school. And apparently our school is leading in numbers to going, which is great. Um, so it will be a fun night, and it's high school only, so if you're high schoolers, tell them to go. It will be fun and chill. Um, also, a few last things. SSJ, the Seeking Social Justice. Next week, we're touring to Berlin Elementary um, to talk to them about like, LGBTQ education and awareness. We got teachers asking for us to go after presenting to the district like a month ago. And we'll also be going to all the other elementary schools hopefully, by the end of the year. Um, we're also presenting at the Education Justice Coalition um, conference this year, which is April 1st. It's going to be about like over 200 people there. Um, I think we're just presenting to a small group, but that's also exciting. Mm -hmm. And finally, oh, not finally, but that's something after. But <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the performance of Pippin coming up. April 13th, 14th, and 15th, if anyone wants to go see. Everyone's been working super hard. Um, I'm stage managing this year, and it's been super fun. But, yeah. So, finally, <laughs> um, we, the student body was introduced to the YES program, and that's the year-end study program that's happening in U32. So the last four days, Four days, I'm get Steven. <laughs> Four days, um, students are signing up right now to do a program that they're interested. They can get um, some grades from it, like some credits that they, if they need it, they can get it, or just like finding a passion with something different. So it should be good because normally the last like four days of school is hard to like be in class. So it should be fun and it, a lot of kids are excited for it. Yeah, teachers are presenting on things that like they're interested in. We have origami, or log rolling, or <laughs> swimming, or African films, etc. Um, so it should be cool. That's, that's wonderful. I have a, just a definition of what is a school blank. Oh, the oh, oh it's, a, it's a dance. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's a dance. I'm showing my image. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a dance, so it should be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a dance. <laughs> it's like the crystal ball that was name. Any questions? I'll see you on April 1st when I'm presenting to I did yeah. see that actually, yeah. About school boards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for the student report. That's super exciting. The, I gotta say the hockey game, I don't know if you guys have noticed the star here, all of the hockey game, all of the <laughs> hockey seniors had a particular <laughs> hair color, and, and these guys have the best principal that joined into getting his hair dyed the same color. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yes. And I have never he been to the Zamboni as well. <laughs> yeah, but he can get his face on the Zamboni too. I have never been to a hockey game. I was I was totally naive. Willow tried to warn me about what happens when they score, your team scores, but I survived the game. Steven rescued me from being completely slashed, but it was really fun. Yeah. Spot for you. Literally, I could put the elbows so I could go under. <laughs> but it was super. It was super fun. So congratulations to the team. It was just. It was. It was amazing. It's a great group of kids, and you know, one of our principals also. Her son Nolan was on the team too. That's the youngest of hers. So it was pretty exciting. I heard from somebody outside the area that the sportsmanship was amazing at the end of the game, the hugging and the congratulating, and the, the people said they were very impressed. Yeah, MMU was, and and uh, it was really one of the best that I've seen, That's just in terms of the fans and, and the behavior. It was it was what we want in all of the games, and it was yeah. so great to see it in that game.
and that's a lot of hockey too. It is. Like, they're very physical. They're not afraid to like say something to each other. Yeah. So it was really nice to see. And that's why I was. Impressed. It's so loud. I'm like a little more dense than I was before. Okay. The cult report. Any highlights? Yeah. Well, the two things that I would highlight are actually on. Uh, for us to talk about, which is just sort of an update on the mascot review and talking about strategic planning. So maybe I'll just hold those until yeah. until we move down to that. Is that, so that yeah, that's okay. I mean, I'm happy to answer questions if there yeah. were other questions, but those were the two biggest. Any questions? So what is the status on that? Any response to the request that they put up the hearing? So we, we have that as a separate. Oh, is it? Okay. We're going there. Yeah, we're going there. So okay. if that's, that's, that's okay, we'll discuss that sure. then. And yep. then yep. any other questions for about the cult report? Thank you for It's really informative. In, no? Okay. So moving right on. The Central Vermont Career Center. Are, our budget passed to. Uh, we were supposed to reorganize last Wednesday, but all of the boards were last one last Monday. But all of the boards are meeting at different times, so we are not able to because we have point members that just did. So we're not able to reorganize until the 21st. That would be the first uh, meeting, but it was uh, we had over 7,000 votes. Yes, it was really it was a big show for 18 towns and small towns. It was really great and a great support. Uh, BSBA update, it's, it's mainly what I put in your board uh, uh, development. Those are, that's the, the most important part of the, which I wanted you to take away, right? It's never a, uh, never a bad time to take a class, even if you had taken a class before and uh, a workshop for the first year journey is so informative and there's a link there to all of the um, webinars archives too as part as part of that so that's the only thing I wanted to highlight. And moving on to board operations and board so the only thing that I think will have a stipend and then the conversation with like I don't know what I also fills here so I don't know if yeah, you want to so do, switch to that first. Yeah. So if the if the board is okay, we want to switch in the field. It's living 17, so we want to make good use of this time with us. So we could we could jump in and do that uh, debrief, and then do the last two items that we had, and then we have executive session and other things. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the consent agenda, but we can do that towards the end before we go into executive session. So welcome, Phil. Thank Thanks you for joining us. And there's Appreciate some food that. there when we're done. We can have some. Okay, and some water. Soda and there's there. some sodas and water okay. right back there too. If I get dry, somebody in the talk can maybe give me a water. Um, <laughs> so, so this is my last scheduled uh, session with a board here in the state of Vermont. I just had a, a presentation with another board. A lot of our emphasis and conversations this week is are, are geared toward new board members. And uh, so congratulations to the recently re-elected board members. I don't see any new faces. Uh, but several of you just won unanimously in your votes. <laughs> Who got the most votes? I'm sure somebody counted that. Yeah. I'm sure it was me. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not shy at all. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to take the opportunity just to talk about board process. And this is an area that's been sort of growing in my awareness, um, concern as an opportunity. When I was a board member, there's a lot of things to be frustrated about. Right? There's just no end of, you know, you want to solve the problems of the world, you can't solve anything. Um, or I, I read something in the Wall Street Journal years ago, the politician boasts, I'm going to change the world, and the garage mechanic sneers, he can't even change a tire. Um, so it's all a matter of perspective, right? Like, what, what do we want to accomplish? And one thing I, I really encourage all board members anywhere, think about what do you want to accomplish on the board. Like, right? It, we, we use the word so-and-so so had an agenda, like it's a bad thing. 
But if you're on a board and there's nothing you want to see, improve, or grow, or progress, what's the point? So, um, you know, th think about what, what is it individually. And then what I, I would encourage, you know, as you have retreats in the future, set aside some time to talk through, here's what I'd really like to see us accomplish. Here's what, you know, and, and get to those kind of shared opportunities for doing good work together. Uh, I, I just a few minutes ago, I texted an article to Floor that she can share or have uh, Meg share with the whole board. It, it's uh, by the executive director of the Panasonic Foundation. So a philanthropic group that years ago took on the endeavor of trying to help support school boards across the U.S. And uh, intriguingly, uh, they wrote Chapter 9 in improving school board effectiveness. Um, I didn't at the time feel like it was a very strong chapter. But I actually um, have come to appreciate their work. And you'll see in that article that she shares that um, you know, there's probably some things to think about. And they might even be a resource uh, that you would consider for your school board or in, in other endeavors that you're involved in. Uh, so I, I'd encourage you to give that a little bit of thought. We've, uh, in draft governance standards that Vermont is adopting this summer, uh, they're in the rule-making process right now. One of the three sort of main pillars in those governance standards is board processes or governance processes. Uh, again, when I got on a school board, um, I was frustrated. Like, can't we do this? Can't we do that? No, it's like a process. I mean, you, you got to have a process for having a first reading of a policy and a second reading of a policy and sometimes a third reading or... You know, just about anything else. You want to talk about something, you got to have a process to get it on the agenda. And then you got to, you know, bring it onto the agenda. Is it for discussion? Is it for decision? Um, there's just a process for everything. And I don't know about all of you, but, you know, in, in my personal life and work, I, I like to make decisions. Let's move forward. Let's, you know, let's have some progress. You mean we got to have another study? Um, so the, the process thing. You know, it's something initially as a board member I was really frustrated with, but over time I realized how important it was um, to, have, to have processes in place. And, and something that stood out to me just recently, and I know this is in those draft governance standards, but, you know, if, if somebody in the community, whether it's a staff member or a community member, says, well, you never know what to expect from this board, that's not a compliment. Right? I mean, there, there are people that sort of think a group should always be random and all over the place, like Phil is. Uh, <laughs> but most people, you know, they kind of wanted things to be predictable. And to get the community engaged, they have to know, well, where can I enter? What can I contribute? So I, I thought we'd take a few minutes to talk about your, your recent budget adoption process. Congratulations, by the way, 70 what percent? 60, 60. Oh, about 60. Oh, geez, I thought it was at least 70. <laughs> Maybe have some hidden votes um, that we haven't seen yet, but All my neighbors voted yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, certainly a risk in today's political climate. Everybody I know about um, doesn't <clears throat> include everybody. But just thinking about you know the process, and uh, you'd have to tell me, like when you started last fall, setting parameters, <clears throat> how you used a committee, um, as you reflect, and we're, we're going to get there hopefully within 15 minutes. Um, when you reflect, what went well, what didn't go well, maybe what did you learn, what what would you suggest? Um, to your current board and or another board five or ten years from now, or if a neighboring district that didn't pass by 60-some percent um, said, how do you do it, right? Um, what, what advice might you give to them? So help me out here because I don't know what I don't know. Uh, but let's talk about the, the process a little bit. Um, what did happen? Somebody walk me through a timeline. Anybody especially if you're on the committee that was tasked for that. Um, how does the process of setting a budget or proposing a budget, how did that get started? Ursula, thanks. I want to say we started in September, October. Nope, I want to say August, September, talking about just our budget calendar. And 
I'm going to get the month wrong, possibly September. We did a board um, training. training on how budgeting in Vermont works and how education finance works. Um, we follow that up. We and then we share our calendar pretty much at every meeting, every step of the way. We've been sharing our calendar of what we do, and so we had a an initial um, community forum meeting for. Uh, oh, we wanted the community to come talk to us yeah, about yeah. what they wanted and somebody might have to jump in and say what we shared with them because I thought we shared some of our just limiting factors potentially. The data, yeah. Budget, budget context, context and numbers, yeah. enrollment, right, focus, areas of focus, kind of general things like that. Very general, like numbers, got their input. So monthly we were having community input and then November was the first draft. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The finance committee established parameters in oh, yes. right. and brought them to the board. So right, the finance committee map established parameters that we recommended to the board. Okay. And then at the next meeting the board heard those and was able to vote for so are you on the finance committee? I am. Okay, so that, that's helpful. What, I, what I've got here, and this correct me if I'm wrong, sometime about the start of the school year, you began to talk about a timeline and a calendar for the budget. You had a training on the budget, and then you started doing monthly community forums to get input from the community about what's most important to them. Right, and concurrent with that, I would say, is the administration and the finance committee. Right, finance committee set parameters, the board, talked about and approved those. And that was November ish. October? October. October. Late October. October. Late October. October. Because mm -hmm. then first draft came from admin from the leadership team in November for us to discuss and look like at. Okay. Goes to finance committee, then comes to the full board. Finance committee gets to look at it, yep. And so process wise, the does the finance committee make a recommendation to the board? Is that how it comes? We have, yeah. Okay. So we, we look at it, we digest it, we have in-depth conversations, and then we can make a recommendation to the board, and they can take it or leave it. Yeah. I got right, because okay. it's not us telling them exactly what to do. It's a discussion, but we can guide them. Yeah. You've had more time with more information on the budget, maybe, than someone not on the finance committee. Right, because we get to have that extra meeting. Right. This was a very unusual meeting. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. we've never gone beyond a parameter. I mean, usually we are, and usually our parameters are like two or three percent, and this parameter was higher. Uh -huh. And then even then, when we were looking at it, the board really discussed it, talked about it, and and you know, by vote went over that parameter. Okay. I, I think I was in a virtual meeting in December, maybe. Um, yeah, conversation. There was a lot. There was a lot of outreach to the community, a lot of community input, and even adding on meetings uh, into January um, to solicit community input because of the um, the difficulties we, that we were having uh, in terms of just coming to a agreement on what the budget should be and in the importance of what what the budget was what was being proposed. Um, so there was there was a significant amount of community um, turnout, I think, uh, in, in this process, uh, which I thought was helpful. So I'm, I'm curious, um, when you say outreach, did the board as a whole kind of have an outreach plan, or did individual board members reach out to their networks? I mean, I saw stuff on Front Porch Forum, but other than that, I don't know. That's, I, I, don't, I can't answer that. I think okay. it was more of a Front Porch Forum. There may have been individual efforts. Um, people using networks to come out uh, to ask people to come participate in the meetings, things like that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? If we were just like uh, you know <clears throat> an observer, what happened from uh, August, end of August, and March budget-wise? So the administration prepares a draft budget, presents it to the finance committee. Finance committee says. Yeah, no, yes, good, brings it to the board. And we make suggestions on the presentation as well. Okay. We're able to like, review the presentation that's going to come to the board 
and we can talk about things that we think might be more important to focus on or information that we want to see at the board meeting potentially that we think people might need to understand the draft. <coughs> did the did the finance committee make any actual like recommended changes to the draft or just changes in how it's presented? Changes to how it's presented. I mean they're not major. I think this you know leadership team does a really good job putting putting together their presentation. And then we came up with, after the first draft came, we came with recommendations for like draft two, like what we would like to see in draft two, which was like what percentage of increase we would like to see, while still maintaining these very specific pillars that we had set out, which was student achievement, health and safety, and um, humanity, and justice. humanity and justice. So um, just so I know, and so I like trying to kind of anchor the relevance of all this, um, your board does a lot of work by committee, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's, um, there's a finance committee, a quality committee, which is the education, the mm -hmm. quality, and, uh, and then we have a negotiations committee, and we also have a um, policy, policy, policy committee. committee. It's How to do bring they, to the board. To they bring, to bring to the board, so in right. essence, is to advance mm -hmm. the work uh -huh. of the of, of the board so we so that we can do some of that work without uh, making a decision for the board so then we bring it to to the board in order to have a bigger discussion but but the work of the committee is also significant right so it does the recommendations of the committee are not like just the we take time you know like the negotiations committee takes a lot of time dealing with they're not dealing the finance committee, the quality committee, so so the board takes it, it serious, right? It doesn't mean that we have to rubber stamp it, but we should still I still say, ask questions. And, and this year, that was a little bit different than in previous in previous years. Okay. Ursula? Well, I was just going to jump in. Like a good example is the policy committee. They do a really big bulk of work of like reviewing the policies. Um, are they still relevant? Do they meet our needs? Are they doing what they need to do? Do they need to be rewritten? And do a bulk of that work and have really big conversations around that. And they bring it to us, but then we can still have changes, conversations, yeah. and ask questions that might send it back. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's really excellent part of that whole process is that the board has, uh, in terms of the policy, is just question things. Um, for seeing for the first, you know, sometimes for the first time, but just raising really significant points. Uh, and so there's a, you know, it's an ongoing changing process until the board's satisfied with what the policy is, and then they will. Do, do all of your committees, finance and, and all of them, do they have a, a clear written charge? This is what this committee does? It might be Don't. a... It might be an area to work on. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's, seriously, yeah. you know, if you're going to have any committee, even if it's a standing committee or ad hoc, whatever its purpose is, it should be written somewhere. This is what this committee does. Otherwise, you get scope creep, right? Where you started out here, but all of a sudden you're, you know, solving the uh, ferry tax problem from Canada or something. I mean, it, it, it's interesting how those things can just grow into something uh, off base. I haven't. I haven't seen any anything like that. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> well, but, you know, maybe if you get people on your board that aren't as rational as you, I mean, you know, it's one of those things might be a healthy process. You just have to your charge. I think we've had a good, um, as our turnover uh -huh. has been major. Right. So each of these committees have had some legacy yeah. in there to yeah. help lead, and people have stepped up to that. So when, let's so say, I went on the yeah. policy, yeah. Chris could take you along what it is about these policies and I could question as a newbie on mm -hmm. that's already been approved, why are we doing all this? And we get that information. And I think that's why we haven't, because we've had that kind of continuation even as we merge, <coughs> our boards were not brand new coming in. Uh -huh. um, so there's been People some continuity yeah. and new, which is good. Look at what the work is that we've done on the equality committee, which is like every year we review our goal for the committee, which isn't specifically a charge, but we ask, is it relevant? Is it what we need to do right now? Good. Good. I mean, that's really we create helpful. A new, we either create a new or update the goal as needed. But, you know, and I wonder if like 
that sort of consistent reflection as we discussed the budgets was present. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about like all of those bulleted points of like creativity mm. and then how that intersects with the Venn diagram or the, the emerging circles of the Yeah, and how Social that process. all intersected with the different versions of the budget and then what we heard from the community. So it, it seemed like there were a lot of different things to consider that maybe during each things, at least in my opinion, that weren't reviewed as we discussed each um, proposal. Like each of those bullets, like how does this affect these bullets? Right, just as a, just as a matter of process, like as, if we're talking about like, you know, just like, I know it's outside of this sort of policy that we were talking about, but it seemed to me that we voted on these things to consider or charge the leadership with that maybe was missing every time we talked about, like, okay, what is this budget and how does it fit into these um, points and within these pillars? I think we tried to get there at the last vote, mm -hmm. you know, which was like, yeah. oh, like, we should have been doing this the whole time. Like that sort of light bulb went off in my head. Mm -hmm. um, See, I, I think on the flip side, we have to trust the committee, right? And that the committee yes. has worked with the, the leadership, right, to make sure that yeah. our, you know education quality, right, and, and performance are addressed, right, and the humanity and, and justice yeah. are are True. are addressed. I agree. Um, so, how many people are on the finance committee? Four, five, four, four. Well, five, 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 five. Okay. yeah. And I, and I think it, to what Joshua was just saying, it's like we have both the community and also we have charged our leadership team with coming back to us. So we, you know, we have to balance yeah. our informed decision, right? In, and and that was and that was hard. I felt because yeah, not being totally honest, I haven't said it, you know, something different to the board, right? Like that, that was to me felt unbalanced this, this, this year because we had a bigger show of, uh, <coughs> of a particular community because it was not a diverse portion of our community, but they, they were a part of, part of the meeting and we were kind of in some ways buying ourselves a year, but we, we had a lot of input from, from our staff in how to get into those parameters that we had asked them to look at. And uh, so, you know, so, just trying to add into what John was saying. So if we, if we were able to do more reflections about the last meeting, I was saying, you know, and any budget, like, I was, that we could have been into. So we tried to debrief our voting yes in this, in this categories, right? This is equitable. And, and we had a discussion, a, a more organized, in some ways, discussion about how the budget fit into what we were trying to do. But hearing what you both are saying makes me think that we might want to reflect in how we, every time we have a budget discussion, maybe bring up the, where there is the parameters or the pillars uh -huh. to make sure that we're responding to both the voice of the community, the voice of the staff, and, and our informed decision. So, you know, I don't know, checking like in your book, you would always say, don't make a temperature decision, right? Make an informed decision, right? So I, I hear you saying several different things, but um, initially I think I heard you alluding to, you know, you've got the professional recommendations of staff, and then you've got community-based concerns, um, preferences, uh, and how to how does the board balance that? I mean, that's yeah. that's one issue. Well, and not only how does it balance it, but how do we elicit? a broad spectrum of input from the beginning mm -hmm. because yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to a little bit disagree with some of what's been said. I, I feel most of the community input was at the end when a lot of work had already gone into it and and people were forced with some potential loss of some things they weren't happy about. Um, it was great to see them come out at that point, but right. it was better to see them come out in June or whenever. Um, you know, that first community forum we had, I think we had two or three community members show up to um, right. talk right. about what their priorities were for the budget. Um, and similarly with, with some feedback I got from staff at 
towards the end of the budget when there was a lot of the budget process when there was a lot of fear um, just people feeling uh, like you know they there was um, just a sense of a lack of transparency where really it was just that maybe missed opportunity to involve people earlier on in the discussion so I think our big task with this coming year will be how do we really get a lot of input from all groups in the beginning? And, and it's, a, it's a challenge for all of public education, right? For boards, for the school system, for individual schools. How do we engage, involve the community, like in a proactive, you know, supportive way? Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm curious when community didn't come out at first, but they came out at the end or toward the end. I think I heard you use the word fear. Um, so emotional things draw people out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, cuts. Yeah. Right. Cuts. It was reactive. Yeah. It became personal. That becomes the strong feelings that they come. Well, and it also right. becomes informative because they only knew what the budget would be and what the result of potential impact would be later in the process. So yeah. mm -hmm. you know, there's lack of information in terms of what these. Um, reduction, well, what these increases, because they're always increases, but it's a matter of how much, uh, how they would impact uh, the community uh, and the school. So, not having that, it's kind of like people go, well, you don't really, you, you're talking more in broad, broad strokes, right. and right. we really don't know what this means for um, going forward. So, it's when, at that point, people did come out and they said, oh, this looks like it's going to be cuts for staffing. And, and things like that. So that is what caught uh, community members' attention because they didn't have that information. It's not like that, that was known from the beginning and people just ignored it. Um, so, you know, the process in terms of trying to divine what the budget is going to do in real time, um, you know, if we could get that early, I bet community support would, or the community participation would be out earlier. We have a fuller um, discussion about whether that's the way we want to go or not. Well, it, 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 to me, it's not about balancing as much as you're filling in the picture. So, right. Right. you know, there wasn't, nobody was holding back any information. It, it's one of these things that just takes a while to develop. Mm -hmm. And then when there was input from different communities, to me, I wasn't necessarily swayed by the argument. It just opened up another door to me of thinking about, okay, here's another piece of this puzzle. So here are these different puzzle pieces, and how am I putting them together? Because perceptions of everyone involved in the process was different. And so I'm not in the thick of it. I need all the different information. And so to me, it's, it's tricky, because there's so much work that um, schools are doing and have to be doing that to be able to give this wide open time to figuring out a budget is is next to impossible yeah so it's really about um, again starting those conversations earlier having those real grounding um, parts but then also having the dialogue and the discussion of what what does it mean it, I, you know it'd be great like in one sense if you could threaten cuts in july <laughs> and then everybody <laughs> jump out right but um yeah. it, 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 it wouldn't do that right so i, I appreciate your analogy that yeah. as the picture gets filled in and then people are like oh i didn't realize it was right. my program or my thing right yeah. ursula i was going to say it's it's about us trying to find a very you said the word proactive way to get people to come and mm -hmm. talk to us because we did start at the beginning with these budget parameters that we knew dropping enrollment the fact that inflation was very high, that costs had increased, and that we were dealing with really tough times. We said it at every single meeting. <coughs> Several meetings were very unattended. And people didn't come out until they heard inflammatory remarks, essentially, where it was going to affect them personally. Yep. And they come and they share their emotionally charged opinion. The concern I have for all of public education in the U.S. right now is the and Meg knows a lot more about this than I do, the details, but you know, the, the drying up of federal funds, right? So we're, we've got this compounded effects of the pandemic and, and other social unrest as a nation, and then on top of that, you know, there was this huge infusion of cash that runs out someday, and 
I think the current con Congress is going to stop the presses. Uh, so then, you know, what will districts like yours with declining enrollment, how will that compound the problem in the next year budget and the budget after that? Yeah, I mean, I, th there, there are a couple pieces that are that we haven't discussed, right? One is that the administration could not meet our parameters, right? Mm -hmm. They Megan came and flat out told us we can't do this and maintain quality standards mm -hmm. unless we change the structure of the district. Mm -hmm. That's when the conversation changed, and that's when we ended up with dueling budgets, right? Mm -hmm. One that came as close to those parameters as we could with those changes that 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 they could do. And the other restored those changes. You know, the other was level, essentially level service. Right. Right. And that's where the conversation on the board got really interesting mm -hmm. about what we do. But I think that that uh, you know, not necessarily a black swan, but that is extremely rare. Mm -hmm. I have not been on other boards, but I those of you who have has the an administration or principal or superintendent ever come and said we can't meet your parameters. We just can't do it and maintain end quality. So that's one of the things we asked them to say, right? You're like, we're going to ask for this. We want it to be increased only this amount. Yes. But keep in mind our academic achievement, um, yep. safe and healthy schools, and the humanity and justice. Right. And so get as close as you possibly can. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I didn't want to stop you. Um, so I, I just want to say I thought in a lot of ways it was a very well-run process. I agreed with a lot of community input, both in terms of meeting time and number of meetings, and the whole setup was really good. And the administration did a really good res job responding to what we asked. One thing that I've always felt, but I really felt at this time, was the lack of a multi-year context. You were kind of hinting at that yeah, with the yeah, federal. Yeah. In business, we would always want to know what's the two, three year outlook, both in terms of the plan and the budget. Um, so we know the decisions that we're making this year, how they may affect us down the road, both in terms of the quality and in terms of the budget. Mm -hmm. And in fact, my biggest concern with this budget is that we just set ourselves up for very difficult next year. And, and years after that, and, and I don't know how exactly to deal with that, but um, um, the strategic planning is intended, in, at least in part, so that we have a sense, when it gets tough, this is what we agreed to. That we're going to we're gonna make tough decisions, but we know what the context is in that sense. And the other thing that we did this year that was a little novel was we set up parameter in the spring. And Megan mentioned we could do more of that. We, you know, and in some ways the strategic plan may fulfill that. But, but there's nothing stopping us from saying yeah. early on, no, these these are the real parameters. These are the things that we're going to expect next year and probably the year after that. And and, the, and that could help us when it when it gets difficult in December and January because that's inevitable. We're we're facing reductions. We're always going to get staff come out, and we're always going to get the parents that perceive that they're most effective. That's just going to happen. And yeah, and having that conversation in the spring and summer is going to be essential for the board to have a shared understanding, shared expectations. Uh, I'm really curious, you know, the rest of our time together, um, follow up this line of thought, like, what would improvement look like for this next budget cycle? It'll be here before you know it. <laughs> um, it's like you finish one, and you're moving right into the next one. Like, so in the guise of maybe lessons learned or just professional reflection as a board, uh, what might you do differently this next year? Uh, or what are some things that you would like to consider and talk about as a team uh, for just process improvement? And Willow can jump in and tell you. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for it. Yeah, I, know. I saw you like on the edge of your seat, the back part of your seat. Um, any thoughts on that? Like, what would what would improvement look like going forward? Well, the, the feedback we were getting. So, and one of the reasons why um, statements were made repeatedly that we need to start the planning now. We need to start those hard conversations now. No one was denying that this next year is going to be even rougher. But the sense was that we needed to 
there with uh, the challenges, and it was a timing challenge, that we could not flesh out completely what those changes would look like. Mm -hmm. You can't always completely flesh it out, but there were some questions that would be asked that couldn't be answered. So we have said repeatedly, we really, and we're, our hope is the strategic plan, um, and that conversation will come up later, but it was to really begin in the spring and the summer to start those hard conversations of these are where we know if we've identified parameters, then let's dig into that. This is the reality of what we know about our numbers. This is the reality of what it looks like. Here are the options that we realistically have, and how do we move forward? If we don't start that conversation till fall, we're dead in the water again, I feel. What, what's your timeline for completing the strategic plan? When do you anticipate? That's what we're going to talk about. We're just about. starting. Okay. So January. 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 So January. So it wouldn't be complete, but I yeah. think you might consider what about the early part of the process yes. could also inform mm -hmm. budget decisions, yeah. right? So. Yeah. And we're committed to year round, right? So mm -hmm. the finance committee is really going to, in theory, at our next meeting, jump right into talking about that. It's our board reflection, too, of our finance committee reflection of what went well. How do we move? How do we move forward in starting to set the vision for for the rest of the year, but with a multi-year, right, <laughs> like right, yeah. Carrie was mentioning, because we because we have to, right? We not because just because we have to, but because we know that that will be best practice. Mm -hmm. So if you're not having these conversations, it, it's inevitable that there's good, because of our declining population that or student population that we would be facing, you know. Besides the shortage of staffing, we would be facing staff decisions for the next two years at least, for for sure. And with the ESSER funds being gone, and we don't know how economy is going to be doing next year, and we're about to agree in negotiations too, you know. So so we have a lot of things up in the air to to start with, but if we get if we get smart about getting enough common understanding, not just the board, but common understanding with our communities, the staff, our leadership team, and having a common understanding of what is the actual goal so that at the end of the day, we are able to not make those decisions just at the last minute because we have more people showing at the last minute, right? Because we, we know that we're gonna have people unhappy. It, it just is it's impossible, to, right. especially in the context that we are right now, right? We don't, we're don't. we not gonna have endless amount of money, we won't have any ESSER funds, so it's, we're, we're gonna have to really tighten our, our, our belts in order to be able to, to be fiscally responsible to our communities too, right? And sustainable. It, it, sustainable yeah, so several important word. things, kind of threads, just to underscore, not to belabor this. As you go through the process of strategic planning, that's going to help thinking multi-year. Mm -hmm. uh, it became really apparent to me four or five years ago working with the board over time that they wanted to see more career and technical education happening throughout their system. And that recognition that well, you don't just wake up one day and decide, you know, we're going to add CTE programs, right? There, there has to be classroom space, there has to be teachers, there has to be certifications, you know, all of the different hiring decisions and so forth, maybe facilities decisions. So I, I, I've come to think that it's really critical for a board to be thinking ongoing multi-year. Like I, I know last time we were together, we talked about superintendent evaluation a little bit. You know, by the time you're completing a superintendent evaluation, you should already be started on what do the parameters look like for next year, right? And how does this fit together? And so certainly with the budget, um, maybe some other decisions that you have upcoming, thinking multi-year will help you have better outcomes. There is a fiscal cliff coming for virtually every school district in the country, certainly every single school district in Vermont. And it concerns me as I move away that I'm not hearing school systems and the public engaged in the realities that we, we think things are tight or tough, but they're going to be much more difficult in less than two years. Yeah, and I just don't I, hear people talking about it. I don't think that's this board. I think this board Good. is very clear-eyed about, about what it is. Nice. We had disagreements about what we should spend this year, uh -huh. but I think there's absolute consensus that the next 12 months yeah. are all about what does this district look like 
where do children go to school, and where do the people who provide services to them work. That's what the strategic planning process is going to be all about. Like we are, we are yeah. all about that. And I think we and I think we we've, we've telegraphed that to the community yeah, as clearly as we can, I even as we were making, you know, the decision to support the higher budget mm -hmm. this year. I mean, and this year was just really a continuity of current service. Like, right? That's right, because it, for me, the the furor, right, that would have erupted had that happened would have led to an even more difficult environment for us to do that work now. Okay. Someone has said. I was just going to say, I think it's important. I think we are clear on that and we communicate that, but I think we need to keep communicating it. And I think we need to be as specific as we possibly can. I don't think now is the time to tiptoe around like very hypothetical things. I think we need to be as specific as we can. Um, and ideally, you know, use that the positive emotional responses um, from you know our communities and our district you know the excitement and the creativity and that it could go into these decisions we have to make it's probably critical community and staff that the board stays mindful of morale uh, mm -hmm. climate right um, if you've ever worked for an organization that was going through budget cuts and people were being laid off or let go um, I worked somewhere a few years back where that was, you know, a monthly occurrence. Uh, the positions were being eliminated, and they had to be. Um, and they were, actually, the organization was doing too little too late in that case. But it was kind of, you know, you realize every time somebody left, that there was this disturbance, there was this uproar. And it was partly your emotions attached to your coworkers, partly your emotions wondering if you were next, and partly the emotions of, oh my God, who's going to do all that person's work now? Right? It, it was really a, a shared um, challenge that needs to be thoughtfully uh, managed in advance as much as possible. Yeah. yeah, and I think like I think that's very true. And I know Jonas, like you're very adamant. You're like we're all on board for next year, but I'm not sure that we can really say that until we get there. You know, judging by the reaction the board had to the emotional response of the community. And that sort of flip that can happen in those situations. Like, we can say we're there, we can say we're all together, but I don't think we really know until. No, of course not. But I think that everybody here is willing to do the work and is willing to talk about right. closing schools, consolidating schools, consolidating programs, right. riffing, right? Reducing the headcount of the staff. Those are all things that have to be on the table. We've been explicit about that. Whether we all agree, that's absolutely a different story. But to engage in, in, in that work with clear that's eyes, I, I don't yeah. see a single person here who's not ready to do that. That's true. That's true. And I think we have to be careful, um, you know, as a person who pushed back and pushed for the level services, I used my brain, I used my thinking, I used my experience. I was informed by the emotional response. I was not swayed by the emotional response. Had it been an emotional response that did not connect to some of the things that I um, was exploring and gathering information about, then I would have been able to hear it and say, I can, I can understand where that is, but it wouldn't have swayed me. So I think we have to be careful to not attribute meaning to what other decisions are that other people are making. Let's give an opportunity, uh, especially for Natasha and Daniel, to weigh in. It, this this idea of what what would process improvement look like for the budget for the next cycle? Uh, any suggestions of, about how to do things differently, or um, at least consider? Well, I think, yeah, I think I think we came up with seven budget parameters. I think. And this was a criticism some made at the time. I think they were a little soft. I think we could be firmer on those. I think to the sort of multi-year planning point, I think we could frame those in terms of multi-year planning, like a three-year budget average increase, and you know, holding ourselves to that so that extraordinary years like this year could be taken into account, but down the road they have to be they have to be sort of Accounted for. Accounted for. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
Those are the ones that I Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really good. I appreciate that. Anyone else add anything? Uh, Natasha, thoughts about budget process improvement for next year? Um, I think for me personally, the, 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 the budget process has, has been daunting. I think this district does a really good job of trying to explain it. Um, but I've, I've said on multiple occasions, I get more information than I've ever wanted to know mm. about, <laughs> about budget, which can be kind of overwhelming. And I feel right, like sometimes right. the stuff that we get, that we talk about, to me, is not the things that are important to what makes our district what it should be. Um, and, and so, like when I think about the, the end of the, the budget process for this year, and listening to the community members who did come out, to me, they were speaking, even though it was personal to me, they were speaking to what makes our district great. And so I felt like, yes, if we're gonna create a budget, we need to create a budget around what we truly believe in as a district, not, um, I don't know how to word what not, but um, yeah, so for me, I think, Using the strategic plan, planning process, and being able to communicate with the with our stakeholders, really about what is it that we want this district to represent? What do we want our students to walk away from? What do we want? What do we want to create so that our educators want to stay a part of this district? What do we want to create so people move into the district and we can grow our our student population? I think that that really needs to be the forefront of the conversation. And how can we re reimagine what education can look like? That's a lot. It is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it, and, and, and I said this at one of our budget here, like, I feel like the the one, well not the one, but one of the one of the exciting things for me that came out of the pandemic. <laughs> was it was our chance to reinvent public education and create a public school system that educators would be excited about, that students would be excited about, that parents would be excited about. And I think we as a country blew it. I do. I think <laughs> I think we, so we ruined our chance. Yeah, so well, but our money's gone. I mean, our money's leaving. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we had, we were flush with, with more money yeah. than we've ever, you know, than we've had. And we had, when I say we, I was in another school system that I was teaching in, separate from this, but I just, I think that we, we, we ruined our chance. Um, and so I think that we as a district are being given another chance to do that. We don't have the money, <laughs> um, but we have a chance to say, okay, we really have to rethink what education looks like in our school system. And I'm really excited about that. Right. And I really hope that our budget process focuses on that. I, I'd like that to be, at least that's what I would like to focus on. I felt a fraction of that in this last process. I think in real time, for me, I realized that, like you can, you can call anything a priority, but then there's the, like, the uh -huh. protected priorities. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I think we realized intuitively that and from feedback that we got as a board how important the counselors were to the schools at this higher level that that this federal funding allowed and how important the safe spaces and resources that the libraries provided were to to the schools and the communities mm -hmm. and we we took action to protect those priorities i 100 percent agree with natasha and i am hopeful that the yeah, the strategic plan lets us be proactive about identifying a lot of those, a lot of those priorities and explicitly saying we're going to work to protect them. Mm -hmm. A word I've thought a lot about the last year is intentional, right? Proactive, intentional. How can the view board be intentional uh, about all that you do? I'm pretty sure my a lot of time is up, but I, I do want to say thank you for allowing me to be with you again. And uh, Thank you for your service on your local school board, your communities, and all the all the work you do here. Um, I do think it's very important that you do it together. You know, uh, it's it's easy when things get hard for 
you know, group of people to kind of get contentious with each other, um, feelings hurt and divided, but the more you can kind of stay in there and lean in, uh, really hear people's heart and, and perspective, the better decisions you'll make for the good, for the greater good. Thanks. Bill, we have a little something for you. Oh. <laughs> something inside. Nice. Usually, round by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come, you're all welcome to come to my house tomorrow. I, I live right by Romney School. We'll be loading a truck. <laughs> if we can get the truck unstuck. Um, oh, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Did you see it? Strange yeah, 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 configuration yeah. in your driveway. Did you try to back up a truck with a trailer and the truck's yeah. empty with no weight or ice? Yeah. So you yeah. moved in a snowstorm and then managing to leave in a snowstorm. Yeah, somehow you arranged for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, so a five minute break to go to the back. Ten minutes. Guys, we're going to try to get started so that. <laughs> Sorry, it was loud. Yeah, it's not snowing outside. Just felt like a go big or go home. Yeah, sure. No, it's So we're back at board operation. Sorry, Chris. We spend quite a bit of time in board development, so I'm going to skip that one and move into stipend. And I'm going to ask um, Suzanne, you're right with your dessert right now, but I was wondering if you mind jumping into this one. No, I don't mind. Uh, the question is, does the board want to receive their stipend payments once a year or two times per year? Uh, if it's paid once per year, it would be paid at the end of the term year, so the last payroll in February, or the end of the member's term if the member gets off the board early. Uh, this would prevent overpayment of stipends and going over the budget if a board member were to exit early. So that's really the question, once a year or twice a year? Their benefits twice a year? The, the twice a year split this year was so that I could give you guys something in December. Um, historically, it had been paid in December and I felt like that was a, a tradition that was like, here's a little something, you know, at the holiday time. So I wanted to keep some part of that this year. That's why I gave you part of it in December. And then the last piece was in February. So which method would prevent any potential overpayments more? Um, I matter? think either one. I, I mean, I can make it so that when I pay it in December, then I'm just paying up to that, that portion. So it's really 10, 10 out of 12 10 months. months. Okay. So either one is fine. I, I guess I didn't understand, or I still don't understand, the two times. If it's for a term, mm -hmm. and our term is election to election, then the February makes sense for the payment. Um, and February works great for me, by the way, because it's just one payroll that we do it. Yeah. I love it. It's fine. That's and then we would, we would do it for anybody that. exiting yeah. early. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So the board has to be... February. February. One, one, payment. one payment. February. And if somebody leaves in August, then they get something prorated, I guess. Yep. But that's. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank Thank okay. Yeah, schedule for retreat. We already talked about that. I'm not going to go into that. In person or remote meeting? Just quickly. Yeah, we. I think we had we had put it on here because we had a question about a meeting later this month being virtual, and then realized it actually Needs the date rescheduled. has to be rescheduled because we have a mandatory, or our man one of our mandatory superintendent board chair trainings is May seventeenth. So the thought is because May has an extra Wednesday, it's not really extra. It seems <laughs> like extra, like this. <laughs> that we move it to the twenty fourth. 
of May. Of May. And part of the reason is that. Mm -hmm. Correct. 24. Yeah. Yep. Part of the reason is that the training is in person. Right, exactly. And it if goes virtual, two it hours easy. past when we would be meeting, so it's just really hard to, it's either we. So we meet the first and the fourth. That one, yes. Yes. Okay. But that doesn't have anything to do with remote. That was just. No, right. no, okay. no that oh, maybe, maybe we thought maybe we could okay. virtual, but then the timing didn't work out. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and yes, we want to keep in mind for you guys that we, we could still have some potential uh, remote meetings mm -hmm. if, if needed, but we would let you know with enough time in advance. Uh, I'm assuming that the board is okay with that and we would continue to do the hybrid in order to, you know, for example, today Jonathan is joining remote. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm not sure. Have we... Are we setting the norm that all meetings are in person, but with a remote option, the hybrid option? No, what I'm, what I'm saying is that we are open to remote meetings, too. But right now we've been having one in person, one remote. Yeah. Are we continuing that? Or are oh, we... Good question. That's what... Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Good, you yeah, good, good question. Yeah, we I'm were, interpreting yeah, for yeah. you. The yeah. job has started, like, our last year with both of them meeting in person, but then we shifted. But maybe not. Mm -hmm. okay, so. I think we had intended, and we had a conversation at the retreat and then this, the first meeting in September, I think people were really excited about the fact that we could be in person, and that's why we had this second meeting's location be here. Um, <coughs> We knew we needed a virtual option, but I do think that we thought that we would be here, and over time, I think it became clear that there are some of those meetings, either for weather reasons or travel reasons, and we flipped them to fully virtual because of that. So I think in some ways the board thought that that, that all in on in-person made sense, and then discovered that some virtual does make sense, and then I think we've updated, I think you know this from whenever they, from January, they have extended the ability to have a virtual meeting with no on-site location through 2024. So it is an option. Um, so what, what's the downside of having them all in person with a remote option? There's no, there, there's, there's, there's no really downside. Not. There's no downside. In the, in the winter, the, because we added some meetings for budget and stuff, so it's nice to be able to have the flexibility mm -hmm. To like, for example, you know, there I, there were one when there were a couple of people that would be in a conference, yes. for example, and it was nice to be able to accommodate that so that they could meet. Yeah. Oh, I agree. The flexibility Remotely, but, is great, but yeah, I but you would have it in the work plan, anyways. Right. right. I think there's also a point at which if there's hardly anyone in person, it's actually a more it's a better experience if everyone's on the screen. Mm -hmm. So there is, but that, that's not a. It's not an impossible task. It sounds like you've got technology connected yeah. because, I mean, yeah, we have. we're not mm -hmm. messing with microphones and it yeah. seems that people online are hearing. So. Yeah. So, so I don't think we need to do it definitely one way. That, that's my sense of definitely one way or another. We, we're posting them pretty clearly if they're in person or remote. And for now, we, are, we have been in person. And this is the one date that we think we need to change right now so far. But we have been one in person, one remote. We've done that at least twice, twice. I think. We did it in February and we did it in December. So I guess the question would be, we have our... We had started to shift to oh, all We had shifted person. to the schools. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we had yeah, shifted to in person. Be, yes, because the, we ended up requesting December's um, 21st to go to virtual because we knew it was so close to the holidays and other things that people, um, you know, might attend more so, which is ironic. Um, but, um, so we had been shifting to being in person. So our next meeting for, for now is scheduled for April 5th. So, and that would be here. Correct. And if you want, I can transition to the visioning strategic planning because the topic of that meeting is a more public overview from our Great Schools Partnership consultant and ideally the steering committee who will have been selected by them 
to do um, kind of a broader overview um, question and answer session. It's not meant to be an engagement session, so it's not that it's not the only opportunity, but it is a kickoff informational session. Can I just ask a quick question? Yes, sorry. So the third the third Wednesday in April is April vacation. It's no, May that no. we moved. Not, right, no, yeah. but it is. Right. Uh, no, it's not for us. No. Not here. Oh, really? When is the last? last we are the tomorrow. Oh, yeah. okay, perfect. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Weekend. Sorry. It's a late one for a lot of districts. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's really late. So we are, and in, in, in your invite, it Thanks. says in person and it's here. So I think we can revisit our next meeting as we have a meeting the and, then, and, and make sure that if there's any conflict mm -hmm. we have the flexibility to move in. Okay. And now yeah. Okay, it's sorry. Totally to shift. Soon. Is that okay, Diane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Um, so there was an update in the report, so I won't rehash that. The, the functional task for tonight is um, obviously to answer questions or get reactions to that initial overview. Um, and for the board to appoint two members to the, and we're calling it a steering committee, and I hope that's not confusing. It is a strategic planning steering committee. Um, but as we've talked about quite a bit, this first phase is to actually design the engagement. So that is part of why it's a little difficult to update you all on here's what it's going to look like, because actually we're convening this group of people to decide what it's going to look like, to pick up all of our work around community mapping, to think about how do we get all of these voices. Um, and it's a tight timeline, as we just talked about in that budget debrief, in order to have the information that we want. Um, because I did talk about January is when our contract ends with great schools. The goal is to have um, pretty solid goals and action steps in the December, January timeframe. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to say that as well. So the task really is to um, appoint two members to the committee. The committee is about 12 to 14 members because we recognize that sometimes people um, fall off. It's really important to have representation from all of our communities, um, from all of our various stakeholder groups. Um, we've done, obviously, in the community newsletter, just some blanket push out to both our faculty and staff and communities. Um, we also took some of the names that were brainstormed in our community mapping session and did some more targeted reaching out and inviting people to apply. So. I'll pause. Happy to answer questions. And we'll continue. I'm just going to add one thing. So we will continue that. And this is not the only committee yes. that the board will have the ability yes. to participate, right? This is just a planning committee. So it's not like there will be other opportunities for board members to leave the, the, the work. So after the plan is over, does this committee disband in terms of its membership or does it continue on? Good question. The vision is that it would continue on through this process through January. Okay. Um, whether or not the, an outcome of the um, process is to, I mean, I'm, I'm totally making this up, but there are some some districts that create community advisory councils or different, right? Like that, it could be that a strategy comes out of the session. But formally, the steering committee would sunset with the conclusion of the strategic plan. Is it, can you just run through what the space allocation on the committee is? You said two board members. And how are the other um, either 12 or yep. 10 slots going to be allocated across the many interest groups that we have? Correct. Here? So currently, the thought is that we would have, so I'll name the categories first. Sure. Um, because I think we're flexible on the number from categories to, in order to get the breadth. Um, student, there will be probably two student reps. Um, this was Stephen has a good brainstorm to have a student who is on site and also a tech center student, a student from the career center. So two students, teacher, administrator, ESP, so support staff. Obviously, you mentioned the board. Um, and then community. The rest would be filled with community members. Let me open up my list to make sure I have everyone on that list. And then various other representatives from, so of those stakeholders, we would make sure that all five communities were represented. That a, um, and you'll anyone who has clicked on the application, it's listed as an application. Um, these questions are optional, but there are demographic questions for people to self-identify because we would like to represent a broad swath. So we would also be looking at um, making sure we are touching on 
different members of our community. But let me pull up my, uh, to make sure I didn't miss a category. And, and open for feedback. That's part of why we're having this conversation. In the application, which I haven't clicked on, but if you do not receive feedback from people in particular demographics of the ethnobody, is there a plan for outreach? Yes. For the, okay. Yes. Targeted Absolutely. outreach is part of what we're doing. Administrators, students, teachers, ESP, community members in all five towns, legislative or government, and again, people can play multiple roles, but to someone who has a connection to the legislature, um, local business or industry leaders, um, community organizations, uh, we have reached out to the um, Friends of Washington Central. So those are the those are the categories I left off. Is it safe to say, because typically when you're doing strategic plan, you're not this is high stakes. I mean, very realistically, this is high stakes, and we need it to be, and we know that we're moving in that way. Typically, it's not that high stakes. I mean, it's important, and it really frames your work. This is going to really potentially shift how we provide, certain, you know, what you were saying, Joe, so well. Um, but I'm not really necessarily seeing that listed here. You know what I mean? It's funny. One of the things that I wrote on my as a, like, in my notes around the budget planning. This process is threading a needle, frankly, because this process is not to design a new structure for this mm -hmm. district. I think if we build it that way, that would not feel good to our communities. I think it, because we would be already making an assumption about what has to happen. This is about what do we want for our kids. We can't, though, make it totally dis divorced from the, um, conversation of what then should our structure be to achieve that. So I think um, that's why this is, a, this, this is not a steering committee that's going to come up with various different models yeah. of mm -hmm. structure. This is a steering committee that's going to help us engage our community to get input on what we want for our kids, including goals. And, and then that is, and this may be a, um, retreat conversation about what is the best way to, and what are the groups of people that are going to generate options alongside of this process. Mm -hmm. But the steering committee isn't to do that, which is pride of part of why you don't see it there. Mm -hmm. But I'm acknowledging that it, it's easy. They're not disconnected. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, they can't be disconnected. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's tricky. Yeah. You know, so, go ahead, no, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. So it almost seems that they have to be connected now. Um, because we've been promising the community that we're going to have these hard conversations starting in the spring and summer. If we're, the process is going to end in January, then we will not get any input. Uh, we'll get input of um, what we want for our students, but we won't get any input on how we deliver that in a concrete fashion um, versus the difficult budgets that we know are coming up, which or deal with the difficult conversation of how are we structured. Um, and, you know, having the community come out just once um, for, you know, what do we want for our kids without combining that with how do we deliver that in a way that we can financially, um, I think is a lost opportunity because how we deliver financially, how we're able to deliver it can impact what we deliver. Right? I mean, just it really is a, and may, maybe this committee won't have that expertise in order to really tease that out from the community, but I think we have to really kind of do the two things at the same time, especially from a timing perspective, because then we're two budget cycles away from any type of structural change that we may be contemplating. So I, I would say the one thing that is not missing, but if this the steering committee, I see it more like as a, as a working high level up here, getting us to have a common understanding of what our communities want. At the same time, parallel, the board is going to be working in what our schools are going to look like with the staff, you know, with the leadership team. So, so it's it's separate, but to get, in order to to me, if we blend. Uh, the options of schools, we are not going to get what, especially the what you were talking about, that, that we're not going to get what we want, that common understanding, we're not going to get what our communities want, right? It's our job and with the, the collaboration of the leadership team to present 
those models to the community, but we're gonna learn how to communicate with the community to through this, we're creating some trust, especially with the community, that we understand what that common, that those common priorities are and that we're working towards that. And one last thing before I let you go, Daniel. So I had this crazy idea. I don't, I don't see this process, and I'm looking at Harry because that, uh, that is this is more organizational, right? Organizational, and then pulling you guys into specific work as we're doing the strategic plan, which I don't know what it is, right? Because we haven't created it. So then pulling out, uh, you know, Natasha for this, Diane for this, leading different things and having. Harry and myself. I don't see how not to be part of this mm -hmm. committee as the chair if I'm going to be like, organizing. And I was thinking that part, you know, if Kari is going to step as a mentor into quality, and that's why I want to bring that up, that if, you know, in his last year we could, this is something that we did before a little bit, but it's different. This time around it's finally looking at our district together, right? So we would just be doing kind of organizational part with this with this group, and then leaning on the on the board when those specifics, what what the process is, so that you can be more specific with your community, right? So giving those tools. So I don't know if that's making sense, but that's sort of without really knowing what this group will deliver, because I feel like there's going to be a lot of work to engaging what that process structure process. But that doesn't mean that if you guys have a different idea of what that should be should talk about it too because I don't need to volunteer <laughs> people. So Daniel and then Kari. Um, I think to Chris's point, I agree with a lot of what you said. I think the way I'm thinking about it for myself is it's my responsibility as a board member, someone who's committed vocally to sort of this year-round budgeting and starting thinking about hard decisions right away to be present and sort of auditing and keeping close track of what those strategic planning conversations sound like, whether I'm on that steering committee or not. And I almost feel like we should we should all sort of we should have some mechanism to hear reports out on a regular basis and be sort of thinking about scenarios and budget implications of every conversation happening. That said, if we put that burden on this strategic planning group, I, th I think that's, that's an unfair burden to put on them. I think that's our burden, primarily. And this is a great opportunity to have a representative group <coughs> sort of leading the strategic plan. But in some cases, I think they're hopefully a proxy for community values and Okay. I was going to say I'm, I'm happy to participate in the um, in the committee just because it's process oriented, and I, I like that sort of thing. I don't know what's the matter with me, but um, I, I um, agree in the sense that the the board is a key stakeholder group. Mm -hmm. So the input that we give and the and the output that we hear back is going to be really important as we plan. I also agree with Chris that. We don't want this just to be a wish list. There needs to be some sense of at what cost or what the, what the priorities or trade-offs the community can accept are. That can, so a lot of it is how we frame the conversation. And just to both of those points, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in, but um, our consultant is very well aware of our realities. And I, so even though I, and, and that is because it is important, I think, to hear what we want. She also understands that we have to get us to a place, and that includes the steering committee, figuring out how to integrate those types of questions or information sharing into the community events. So there is an awareness of what needs to come out of this process, and I think the steering committee even can take this feedback as well to say, well, how would we design the input session? What questions do we ask um, so that it is more thoughtfully connected? So I just wanted to say they're they are aware of what we have to what we have to have at the end of this. Sorry, Jonas. What is the timeline for coming to a conclusion on what the structure of the district is, and how do we make that decision? So this is my this is a little bit me off the cuff answering that question. I think the 
the conversation about structure is big enough. I mean, you mentioned two budget cycles. It's big enough that it's going to take two budget cycles anyway, right? Like, in, in, in and I, I might be getting ahead of it. I don't know. I mean, I don't, that, that implies a big drastic. But any, I mean, if we think about the feedback that we got about um, cross-district service delivery in small areas, um, it was big. So I don't think there is an official timeline. I think we are going to run financially headlong into realities that make us make quick decisions. Yeah, um, but we don't want to do that again, right? right? So <laughs> that's it's kind of well, a, it, so it's, it, it's it's always been my impression and in, in, in my thought that we we that process would be running sort of in parallel with the budget, mm -hmm. so that when we have a budget next year, it reflects a different structure. And that is is that what we're what we're looking toward, or or do you anticipate that we will not be in a position to make decisions about structure? until the following year. I think, well, for, first of all, it is the, it, it, the board can make those decisions on yeah. the timeline that it believes it needs to make them. I think that they can. I mean, there can be a simultaneous conversation of this board studying the various different structures and models. That can be happen, happening simultaneously with this strategic planning process. And, and that's what I meant by we may need to talk about that at the retreat as a, something more specific. I'm just trying to emphasize that it's not the steering committee of the strategic planning process who is going to do that in terms of development models. Right. They're going to be gathering input. I do think that it can be simultaneous. Yeah. And then depending on what it is you're proposing, what it is you decide to own and recommend, will tell you what the timeline should be. So I think that those things should happen simultaneously. I think that we should be working to try and get an answer concurrent with the budget. For next year, I think that that process also needs to be driven by by a professional. I don't think that this board can can, for all the great things that we are, I don't think that we have the capacity to put together to, to restructure the district. But I think that that has to happen immediately, and putting that off an, an, another year is really concerning. And separating, trying to have some kind of firewall between strategic planning. And the structure conversation, I agree with Chris, I think is gonna, we're gonna run into trouble there because people are gonna come to these things wanting to talk about not wanting their school clothes. Well, and I trust, I trust the process. I mean, I think that that, that was, you know, I think this is a good question for, for the Jeannie Phillips, is if they're aware of that, what, us, what would their view of the parallel process? Because as they begin this work, there may be then indicators or action items that specifically go to what's the structure. To me, it's more than two budget cycles. We're in a crisis and we need to cut in the next two budget crises, but any sustainable change is a good five years. And this strategic plan, I would think, would cover five years. So it's, it's absolutely, we have to be working parallel, but we have to also provide the opportunity that we're not being driven by the structure only, but by what the what the hopes and the goals and the vision is. Yeah, and to that, Jonathan, to, I would just mention that if, if somebody comes to the meeting and says, I don't want you to close my school, it's how, how do we reframe that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is best for kids? Is it best for kids to have three kids in school right now? These are opportunities that the kids will have in kindergarten, right? Or in, mm -hmm. or in preschool. So, so it doesn't mean that we are not going to have people showing up because of that, but how do we frame that conversation again into what is yeah. best for kids? What what are what do we value? I hear you. I, 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 I hear you. I think we're just going to run. I think we're going to run into some frustration with people who want to talk about end results, mm -hmm. right? In, instead of you know mind mapping. And, yeah. and, and the other thing. Wait, wait, so okay. wait, sir. Okay. Eric, Eric, Ursula, and Eric, 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 sorry, Eric, and then So this might be a lot of what's already been said, but I, I think it is, I think with our last budget process, it was strategic planning, but the public really gave their input after we put the budget out and like put the controversial stuff on the table. Um, and I think part of the conversation at the beginning is these are possibilities. Get their reactions to possibilities with that because if we don't give them possibilities they have nothing really to react to until it's too late and i think that's one of the things that happened last year um so i think just having like a general idea and i think we've actually done a reasonable job towards the end of the last budget session 
I was starting to talk about the future, about possibilities, if the public was paying attention, you know, to, you know, if those are our real possibilities, you know, that's great because, you know, that, that's what should have them talking. Um, and the committee is something I also would be interested in as well. So. Thank you, Eric. It, so, yes, I, I wanted to talk about some assumptions I've made or thoughts that I've had on this because I want to make sure that I have it clear. But my understanding is that you've got this vision steering committee who is going to work to create how we talk to the community. And Natasha talked about it earlier, right? Like figuring out what do we want education to look like and then how do we change how we're providing it so that we're meeting those needs that we want in our community. And that's what we're going to be getting from this process, but I assume we also have to lean a lot on administration and leadership team to go, what are the resources we currently have? What can we do with the resources we have? And these are some ideas. So the steering committee is not doing that work, and the committees and the community discussions aren't building those alternatives, but they're going to be coming up from leadership team. And we have to talk about them. And there are going to be people who are angry and don't like them. It doesn't matter what we say or do. There are going to be people who, that aren't happy. They find it difficult to change. But the more we can engage the community around any sort of restructuring, the better. I mean, if we can generate ideas from the community and provide lots of options and a lot of opportunity for feedback, that is, in my opinion, the best way to approach it rather than, you know, something coming from the top down. Here are two ideas, what do you think people are going to react? And the other thing is that our articles of agreement give the community a veto um, if a school is being closed. But as long um, as we operate one grade. What? As long as we operate one grade. You know, you can, you can do school. that and talk about creating trust. We're going to no. create this fake thing and, and just so to avoid the art. But, you really, and, and the schools are very important to communities, as we all know. And so, you know, people will be unhappy, but I think having them engaged that this is what we're really talking about here in terms of a structural change early on and, and getting that process going, I think it will, it will be equally dissatisfying in the long run, but more accepted in the long run as well because Schools and local schools mean a lot to the community just from the social networking and the importance of having a school in town. And it's going to, it's, it's, we got to, we have to, I think, move on parallel, but in an organized parallel way, not just wait for administration to say, this is what we think should be done, but having community involved in that and board members involved in that. And if we need to set up a, a separate type of committee that would be dealing with the structural issues just in terms of options and what, what they do and what the financial impact of that would, would we'd anticipate they would be, we should do that. Um, just again, I think we've kind of committed to that during this last budget process that we were going to start working on that and specifically talked about structural change, exploring that, and I think we should do it. We should at least move, start moving there and getting community input because I think we will wait till the end, it will, be, it will just be difficult. So we'll are we so talking wait, about, can I, oh, sorry. sorry. I think it's an important to, so I'm going to pick up a thread from what you said, Ursula. If my bias is that if we don't have a conversation with our community about what we want for kids, and we simultaneously try to just say, here, here are a few different proposals for restructuring, all we're really doing is moving shells. Mm -hmm. It's a shell game. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I understand, and that is not meant to say we're going to, do this process and then fast forward through something at the end or, or hide it from the community. And I don't think that we will find ourselves in a, um, oh, it's now gonna take ten, 10 years. Like I'm not, I mean, we are the people telling you that we don't have 10 years to figure this out. And that is true. I don't think that we can, I think what you would find the feedback we heard when we talked about restructuring this year, small, small scale restructuring that was based on good faith analysis of our numbers, mm -hmm. but it was a good faith analysis of our numbers. We got feedback that said that feels too rushed, that feels random, I don't know why you would do that. 
So I don't know how you even do the things that we're saying to get us there without this grounding process, which is why we've been talking about this part of the strategic planning. And I think, and I kind of like Diane, the process, and one of the reasons we picked this facilitator is so the process could do things to set us up to do both. So I, I think that we, I think we can, I think the steering committee can think about how, do, how would we enter this conversation into the forums that we have so that, so that we're not bringing people out and then not getting this input. I think there is a way to design it. I don't know if the board just wants to say, here, here, are, the, here are the different options, what we're missing is what did we ground those options in? Yeah, I, I, I want to say next? essentially that in, an, yeah. in another way. But I think the uh, purpose of this process is to coalesce, the community coalesce around an effective path forward. Mm -hmm. And the, I think the single most important ingredient in that is it's a credible process. And so we have to be careful as the board that's sort of driving it off sort of on the sidelines, but we have to remain open-minded. We have to be perceived as open-minded and we have to be open-minded and curious so that people don't perceive that we've for, you know, judged the outcome ahead of time. Because then why have the process and we're not gonna get the buy-in in the end. So as, as much as I wanna move forward as quickly as possible, I wish we had done this a yeah. long time ago, I think, uh, the most important thing is that we do it right. Yeah, but if so Michaela and then Daniel and then Ursula. So I guess, oh, sorry, sorry, actually, Joshua, oh, okay. you were up oh, first okay. and I did. Uh, uh, no, no, it's okay. I'm sorry, I totally interrupted when I asked that. Yeah. No, uh, it's good. Everything was said and questions were asked, okay. it would be redundant. So I think I just am looking for some reassurance then around the timeline because with this last budget cycle, when I heard from the leadership team, there is no way we can cut the budget anymore without restructuring. In my, I guess I translated that into, okay, so for next year we have to restructure. <laughs> um, so I am all for taking the time if we have it. So, so if... If I'm being reassured that we have the time, then I'm all for taking the time. I think what we're saying is that we're going to multitask, right? Mm -hmm. that, that without a heart, without a narrative, that, like what we're creating with this is, is the heart. So that if we, if we have that heart, we can bring the brain to this, which is going to be us working together. And when those two come together, we're going to have a product that our community is going to respect, is going to trust, and is going to support. Because otherwise, we are not going to be able to have those. Sometimes in isolation, you can say, I don't want my school. And I didn't mean to be disingenuous when I said we can you know, leave one way open. But it might be because we understand that our schools are the, the center of our, that, you know, that school might be repurposed for something that's still community, right? Or that it is childcare. That we, we don't know that. What are the needs of our community? So, so with this, we're doing the work that we did not have the opportunity to do before we unified, right? We, we have never had this conversation as, as a unified district. We, we have a lot of commonalities because of the way we've been structured as, as, as you before, but we have never had the opportunity to have this conversation with the community in the context that we're right now. So that context of a population declining, um, the ESSER funds and economic, is still gonna be surrounding this conversation. So it will inform it. And, and we're just gonna have to work a little harder this year. So I'm all for visioning this year. Yeah. I don't want at the very end just to, to, us to be put up against a, a short time frame for restructuring because we've run out of time. So mm -hmm. if we have time, let's let's dream this. I'm just concerned we're, we're, we're approaching the community obliquely. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm concerned about. And as we learned from the Wizard of Oz, the heart and the brain and the courage all work together <laughs> down the yellow brick road to get there together. You know, not, not one at a time showing up at the end, but you know, helping each other out with each of their respective skills. And so really I'm looking at you know, this, it, it's a, you know, they, they do move together. Um, yeah, and especially when you hear the community in, yeah. par in parallel, but you hear the community, uh, it's just, I cannot overstate how 
visceral, I think this will be for some communities if their schools are being restructured out of existence, um, uh, potentially. Uh, and I don't mean to be, I'm not, you know, don't mean to be creating alarm, but I think that's what we're, we're kind of hearing about, restructuring um, in some fashion like that. And I think we should be working in parallel toward that, just in terms of exploring options. Yeah. So. Um, I think that you know, the way Joe must be framing it is not, not approaching the community obliquely. I think, and this gets to what you were saying, Megan, that it's, it, it's all in the design, how, how accessible the process is. And I think like the phrase feedback loop seemed really important to me. And what, what is the structured report back to this group and to the administration that satisfies the community's feeling that this process is relevant and it drives, it's driving at least a significant portion of restructuring planning. Um, so I, I'm curious what that looks like. Is it consensus based? You know, we have a forum to concepts rise to the top and there's a clear process for how those get sort of um, judged in terms of their feasibility, in terms of their budget implications, in terms of the timeline for rollout. Um, and I'm also curious about, because this is the crux of the issue, everything is sort of, any, any proposal has to be sort of scored budgetarily. I'm curious about the central offices capacity sort of thinking like May to January to be thrown sort of, you know, at best like, you know, three scenarios and like what, what their implications were in terms of budget. At worst, like 15 curveballs at random times from different committees asking, is this doable or well, how much money would this save? And I guess some happy medium in between where there's equity and there's access to the process, but it's also not stressing central office's ability to, to weigh these options seriously. So I mean, I'm happy to share a couple <coughs> thoughts. So I think that related to that last piece, actually related to several of these, um, it is possible once, uh, once the board is coalescing around some conceptual models or a conceptual model to get to that model over time that includes some budget savings year to year without jumping fully into a restructure. So part of the not getting kind of is because um, when I say it's a multi-year process, it doesn't mean, it, I mean to get to the, whatever the end design is a multi-year process. And there's steps in between. So one piece is just to understand that as the board is doing this work and getting informed, um, it's a, it's a, there are steps to take. It's not one fell swoop, whatever gets decided. The second piece related, um, or Vermont has, and uh, if you read any sort of education news, has several examples of districts who took the approach of using this type of process to study structure and they did not find success in those processes because the whole process was people knew in advance but we're predetermined that we have to do x and it actually felt disingenuous to community members because it felt predetermined so that's part of why i mean it's part of why I pitched to the board and part of why we went forward with this type of process. And again, I'm not saying that we do this and we don't talk about structure and then we pick up structure. They are simultaneous. I just don't think that if, if our, the, it's been tricky in Vermont to just have this be about structure. So, and I think that we've got a committee I mean, that's the purpose of designing it this way, is that the people on the committee would represent all of these perspectives as they design the process. And that's the thing, we haven't designed the process yet, because we're trying to figure out if we're, you know, like what the committee makeup is going to be to design the process that we are all talking that we want to see so clearly. So we, you know, we're right at that very, very beginning, but I also wanted to talk 
Jonas, you said that like you don't want to come to the community obliquely, like we're hiding things. I don't think that that's no, necessarily not, what. Not, not hiding things, but Hope no. You know, I went through I went through a, a visioning process once uh, with a nonprofit organization uh, that served a community that was very low on funds, right? And uh, lots of different groups around, right? And the leader of the organization that I was working for, you know, said they're. You know, when we ask them what do they need, what does the field need, what does the community need, they're going to say money, right? We need to find a way to tell them it's not really money that you want, right? And I'm not saying that that's what we're going to do, right? Is that like like obscure or hide what our end goal is here? What I'm saying is that I think that we need to be explicit. Like we are gathering input here on what you want the schools to be, and that information is going to help us restructure the district. Right, straight. I think we need to be straight up about that. You're not going to be, you know, you people here, you're not going to be telling us what to do. We're not going to be running through options here. But like this, th th that is the end goal here. I think that we need to be explicit. I'd like to finish mine. So I guess I envisioned us being able to be very centered on these are the difficulties we are facing. These are these parameters that we need to find a way to fit in with all of these difficulties, but also Chris had mentioned something about all of our communities finding their school very central, and we heard it from these community members, like my town, my school, we might need to approach this with some conversations and narratives that talk about community in a different way, that isn't just your town and your school and that isolated tiny group. It might be a different sense of community that we are going to find when we are done. And it's not a bad thing, it's a different thing. Do you have no, I, I, I don't want to interrupt anyone. At the end of the day, Megan, I trust you. This is what we brought you here to do, to have vision right, and to lead processes like this. If this is the way to go, and then, then I'm, I, I'm behind you 100%, just at the end, just so we're, we're clear. I don't want to change anything. I think that you and Floor right, and the committee will have a vision of what we're going to do here. I'm, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Communication is the key. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. This is this is part of the conversation, and I and I and I think you're. There are ideas swirling already, and I don't. You know, no one's looking to cook a, kick a can down the road for sure. So I, I, I appreciate that. This is all really helpful. I, I kind of agree, um, being really specific as a steering committee, yeah. about the parameters, the context, all the things we've been talking about is part of how they'll design the process. And the board also should talk about what is its parallel structure that it wants to develop. Um, is that an ad hoc committee? Is that a short-term working group that is not one of our formalized committees that we did today, but it's something that comes out of the retreat so that there's a group of people? Yeah. And I'm not saying that's the way to do it, but it's an option. So the board can make sure that you're, that you're checking that box of moving fast enough. And having that cohesive vision of learning is going to benefit us all, you know, like having that Spanish conversation, right? Is that what the community is about? Is, is there arts? Is that, you know, we want to have more math? We want to, like, asking the right questions also to the community so that we can deliver to create the, the structure, deliver towards what the community's uh, vision in. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll. I don't know that we have all the answers. We this is going to be uh, what I call the design development, right? This is where we are right now. We ask a big question, then we we gather some input. We're developing a model, and that model is going to be a continuous <laughs> design process, right? It's not it's not linear. Mm -hmm. So, with that, what would the pleasure of the board be? You have if we were, we're ready to move on. No, no, go ahead, on. John. Oh John, no, John. I was just saying like. As a whole board, I think we should do as Diane say, trust the process. I think we should do as Natasha says, have, like listen to the community and envision and with their help and this organization's help, um, realize that the board is one, small, one stakeholder in this process. And I don't think it is appropriate for us to create the conversation ahead of time. And also, I think it dovetails in what Philip was saying, like, if we task this, this committee with too much, it turns into like this creep, and then nothing productive can come out of it. And it could feel 
just worthless in the end. Um, anyway, so we can move on. So I'd like to move that we point Floor and Kari as board representatives to this this committee. I would no I'm nominate, I think, Eric. Yeah, yeah Eric also interest. expressed interest. I would nominate Eric. So we can have three. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I mean, the makeup of the committee is meant to be broad. I think the intention was to solidify two tonight. And this is a little bit, so I'm, it's a little off the cuff, but I'm thinking about this the same way as teachers, for example. So we, the intention, so that the committee can be broad, is we said two teachers, a teacher from the primary level, elementary level, and a teacher from the high school. I have more than two teachers who have applied. Once we have filled the minimum number, the intention is to then to go back through those applications and say, oh, well, are, we're, missing, uh, we're missing women from Worcester, or we're missing, you know, um, honestly. So there would be an opportunity to have an additional teacher. That's how we've thought about teachers. And I'm offering that for the board to talk about it. It's a, I don't know if that's perhaps how you want to, um, I don't think there's an inherent problem with there being three board members. I, I think that's also your decision. If you were to tell me that you wanted the entire board to be the steering committee, <laughs> that would probably, I'd have feelings about that. But three versus two, I mean, that's, uh, that's, up, that's up to the board. But I wanted to share that that's how we're thinking about, or, or if there's more administrators that want to be, is first we fill the minimum number, and then we go back through and, and look at our gaps, so. I would be a more in favor of keeping it minimal or um, involvement, so more towards the two than in much. Since we'll have a say in other ways, it just seems right. like Isn't padding it with the board. Yeah. The four members doesn't make sense. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking, because you said, you know, people kind of wear more than one hat mm -hmm. in terms of, so I'm wondering, as opposed to us picking people from the board now, knowing that there are three individuals who are interested, could we wait to see who else decides to be on this committee? And then we can look at the three board members to see which of our board members fill the holes that are not already taken mm -hmm. by the other stakeholders. So that's a great question. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. it, it does. My, my question back to the board would be, we don't have a point in time for you all to talk about that and make the final decision. Because the intention is that we would select the steering committee, it would probably have its first meeting before the end of March, and that committee would help do that report out in April. And you just aren't all sitting in the same room. So if the intention, unless the intention is just for me to communicate, here are the missing. You see what I'm saying? Are there other members of our board who are interested in serving on the steering committee for this? Beside the three that were mentioned already? I'm trusting that there will be opportunities to have our voice at the table and that the communication will be and transparency will be going back and forth. So, because I think that's, to me, that's the tension is yes. I don't really understand it and I'm, I'm worried, but it's my own worry. It's not a worry of the process. And the, the idea is that there would be opportunities for other board members to lead sessions, right? Like it's yes. not just that the steering committee, the steering committee is creating the process. We don't get to do all the work. We don't get to like be at every meeting, right? Like we can create a process that is transparent mm -hmm. and uh, will hopefully clarify the vision for our entire district as a as a whole, right? So, but we don't get to do, you know, say, you know, hold all the cards, right? Mm -hmm. Like there would be, I don't know what that process is like yet, but so. I, I've I've been saying to lots of other stakeholder groups. Um, you are all like well <laughs> the leadership team itself is a is a stakeholder group they are not all going to be on the committee they're going to be represented so and the same thing with teachers you know we talked to labor management about having them be able to um, have a voice and just so I, anyway it's a drum i've been beating is it's not it's meant to be broad so that they can then make sure that they get all of the pieces So the question we have is two or three board members, and if we go with two, how do we do that selection? Just do a straight up vote, or is there a sense two or three? 
what if we had nominate two with an alternative or, you know, like recognizing that the third would step in into an opening that might be there? I think that's hard with an ongoing committee if they're not able to go to the committee on an ongoing basis. I didn't mean an opening like when somebody can't make it one day. You just I meant, mean like <coughs> Megan was talking about, filling the minimum yeah. and then coming back in and based on the applications that we've gotten going, we still need one more five more people. So maybe we can take something from the board or we need something from the board. We need somebody from East Montpelier, right? Or whatever that might be. That was what I was talking about, not like an alternate is, that tags in every other No, it's fine. I just, we, we still then back to, are we picking two tonight or are we picking three tonight? And that's, I mean, sounds like no one wants really to deal My with that. Is two. Um, so, I so, I mean, you can't yeah. choose. Great. And, you know, we would be heavy in East Montpelier if we had both you and me on the, so. I, I will leave it up to the board. You what? I'll leave it up to the board. So, I, mean, I think to respect the interest of the three that have expressed yeah. we should vote. Yeah. And, okay. and, um, okay. and I, don't, I don't know if that means we do it each individual or if people just hand in a ballot with the two people that they select. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just saying those are two procedures. Let's, can we vote to see if we want three or two? Yes, let's yeah. see that. that. So, All right. I, 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 is there I a move, motion I, on the table? Yeah, I move yeah. that there be three board members on the steering committee. I second. Moves and Chris seconds. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Do you need aye. a hand raise? Yeah, hand raise. Yeah. So one, Jonathan, you two, want to put your hand up? Jonathan said that. One, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, seven, eight, so we have majority. So okay. I nominate so, Ari and Eric and four. Okay. Second. You got that, Lisa? Yeah. Yes. I'll second. I'll second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay. I'm gonna, keeping you up late here today. That's a long discussion. <laughs> so hopefully we can do this one. The famous last words. So, Act 152 non discriminatory school branding. I can make this very quick because the, um, you've all read the report and you had a little bit of an update. You kind of know where we are in the process. The answer to your question, Chris, is I do not believe we've heard back yet from the two organizations. We've asked, What we've essentially said is we're doing a review. We think it would be better before you have the hearing to read the review. If they were to come back to us and say, no, we want a hearing. We would schedule the hearing, um, but no, we have not heard back from them. Yeah. So once they file a complaint, do we have an obligation to set a hearing within a certain period of time? We looked at that. There is no timeline in the policy. There's a timeline from which the decision has to be rendered after the hearing. Right. Uh, but we did. We replied the same week that right. they. Right. I saw that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, we and we consulted with our legal counsel yes. too. So yeah. And we copy Secretary French the week after when we hadn't heard from them, just like, you know, by the way, just we want you to know that we have responded <coughs> and we still haven't yet heard. So it's it's in their court. We, so by all means, we're continuing the process and we we'll hope to have our report back to you in May. And that's... If not, and possibly April. So April, yeah. just as an update, the, we have got a small group of students that are enthusiastic about it. The first, there's two pieces essentially. There's looking at what where it came from and what's the imagery associated with it, and then that's asking kids what they think about it now, because they're both important. They are working on that. We meet again in a couple of weeks. They'll generate that report back to you in written form. I would like to invite them to the meeting, and they can present what, what they found to you. Um, what we'll do at our next meeting is they're going to design how they want to get input from their students, uh, from their peers. Is it going to be a community outreach part? Then well? that would be the board. So the so this part is the review of what it of this piece, and then the board would have that discussion. And and the because the policy essentially says we support your review of your mascot. Okay. Um, I'm sure the students also could weigh in on how they might get that input mm -hmm. and share that with you. But that's the goal. Um, and so all else being equal, because we were going to do this anyway. 
April, May would be our time frame. If we find out that they would like a hearing sooner, I would say we probably try to do our report faster so they can still have the benefit of that report when you heard from the organizations. Okay. Can I give a quick, quick question? Yeah. Without, you know, compromising privacy or anything, can you describe the group of students who are leading this review? Yes, so they range from middle school to high school. Um, they, the group is generated from student council, but several of them also sit on some of our other student groups. And it's a, it's a mix of, it's a pretty representative group actually of our student body, demographically. Thank you. Yep. It's great. They're, it's kind of fun. It's a fun project, <laughs> honestly. I know it's really sensitive and I'm not making light of it. No, no, it's right. no, 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 making it student driven, right? Mm -hmm. That is really, yep. it's really important and mm -hmm. carrying it through, you know. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, make it, turning it into an opportunity. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so consent agenda, so we can go into our specific sessions that I'm sure are not going to take enough time. Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 well, I moved to the minutes of February 1st, February 15th, and February 24th. Second. Okay, yeah. any discussion? No. Well, those in favor, signify by saying aye. Did you have any questions? Okay. No. Just aye. thanks to Lisa. Yes. yes. Lisa. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Any opposed? Any abstain? The motion carries. Uh, approve the board orders. Do I have a motion, Lindy? Yes. I just I closed my computer, but I had it here. Uh, it's not spin. All right, I make a motion to approve the board order in the uh, for 216.23 through 315.23 in the total amount of $441,720.08. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And then uh, you guys don't need to send an email, Jonathan, you're remote, but the board has signed and we have enough signatures, okay? So, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, there's no personnel. A uh, update in vacancies? Okay, or? Um, it is unchanged from the last time we had this conversation. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 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 Do you, I don't know nope. if you want to flip the order, only because I think Susan should be doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was actually going to ask the board if the information they received was enough. What should we do? This about the superintendent? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it when we get into it. Yeah, okay. So, in this case, if we're going to have a motion. I'm going to go into uh, executive session for the purpose of uh, discussing negotiation strategy to include Megan Roy and Suzanne. Second. Thank you, we just turn everything up and call it good because that well, that's why we left executive sessions at the end and there there won't be any action so can, can, mark can you put jonathan in a breakout room by himself so or he can what about just, uh, okay. no i can i can just I can just call him, uh, and Mark, you can go. You want to do that on the phone? With yeah, us? Jonathan, you okay if I call you? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Cell phone or home? Or uh, cell. So. Okay. So I think Mark. So I'll go ahead and add this. Yep. And then, so while you guys are packing up, you guys can go to the bathroom. You're going to need to be. Okay. 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 Okay.